Hello, and welcome to Shadow of the Broker 129 Monsters We Make. I'm Jack, GMing this special Halloween mission, and I just forgot to remove this token, so while I take care of this, everyone go ahead and introduce yourselves, starting with James. I'm playing War Chief Nardell of the Razor Tusks, a Wifid Guardian, um, formerly uh, the, as his name suggests, the war leader uh, of the... Razor Tusk clan on Tula was discovered by some agents in an earlier mission and now uh, is increasing his force abilities and his support, um, or I guess really more than his support for the rebellion, his uh, resistance against the Empire. Okay, and next up, JB. <clears throat> Hello, I'm playing Aura Hikat, Zexto Super Tech, and um, she. Over the past few months, she's gotten much more involved with the Rebellion, so she's glad to be doing anything she can to help them out again. All right. Uh, after him, we have George. Um, playing Delta Zero Charlie, also known as Doc, uh, former uh, member of a gank mercenary team, uh, now joining the Rebellion uh, to help prevent the loss of life. All right. Uh, then we have David. Hello, I'll be playing Tillon. He's a Keldor seer, one of the Baron Du sages of his homeworld. He uh, left because his passive order didn't have the means to help him fight the foreseen darkness that he has in his future. And then finally we have D. Hi, I'm the Shadow Cat, and I'm playing Dara. She's a gunslinger, pilot, now sharpshooter, all the way from Scylla. And she's been with Broker for quite a long time. All right. And well, let's go ahead and do our resource rolls. 96, I know that over here to do uh, obligation. does hit, I believe. Um, 32 is War Chief Nardell's camaraderie. Um, so as a former kind of tribal leader, uh, Nardell, you know, very much believes in the the strength that a group can have through a kind of a shared ethos um, and tries to, I guess not enforce, but uh, promote that feeling amongst uh, his agents, his agent buddies. And then 27 is going to be closer to Tillin's. Uh, he's 37, I believe. And what is Tillin's yeah. morality? Whoa, it never comes up. I'm going to have to actually go look at that. I believe it's something curiosity and obsession. He's very curious about all aspects of the Force and uh, can sometimes be overzealous in his desire to find new information or techniques in the Force. Hmm. That will be interesting. Okay, so uh, we're going to start a little bit in Medio Res, as you all have already been summoned uh, by Rebel Command and told to embark on the Sun Flare and jump to coordinates that destination has not been disclosed to you yet. However... Uh, after the Sun Flare jumps into hyperspace under the, under the guidance of Pippa, uh, you are all again summoned to the conference room where a hologram appears above the table. And in it appears a Mon Calamari in uh, quite distinguished officer's robes. You don't see that much in the Alliance. And he uh, nods to each of you before he begins uh, and forgive me in advance for not trying to fake a calamari accent. Uh, it just turns out to be Richard Nixon. Uh, good afternoon, agents. You find yourself on course to the last uh, capital ship shipyard the Rebel Alliance owns outside Mon Calamari space. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the Dagata outpost is hidden within a very dense debris field collected over eons of uh, debris. However, we lost contact with it after the Battle of Hoth, and we need you to return to the debris field and find out what went wrong. Hopefully, 
they were they suffered uh, no due injury, but we can't be certain, which is why we are sending our best to uncover what happened to the outpost. And if it's a trap? Sorry, I had to get that in. The last transmission from this outpost seemed to make it seem everything was normal. They had uh, were conducting normal repairs on ships that had entered the sector, and there seemed to be no hint that there was any uh, subterfuge. However, if it is a trap, I trust you to uncover it and escape alive so that we may finally conclude uh, this un this open chapter in our recovery from the Imperial reprisal. Okay. Um, so ship's logs. And what else? Any, any record you could find of what happened to this facility, if it is offline, would be beneficial. However, if it ha happens to be online, we do expect you to render any assistance you might be able to provide. No, Again, we'll... for all we know, it might have just been a generator failure. Dogana Outpost is made out of the wreckage of, I think, most recently Clone Wars vessels. So it uh, has been known to have maintenance issues. Yep. No problem. We'll render what assistance we can. Um, and we'll contact you shortly when on station. Very good. I do warn you in advance, the outpost is hidden within the debris field, and the debris field itself is very dense. We usually have telemetry satellites stationed within the debris field to guide larger vessels in. However, if the facility has gone dark, chances are good that the telemetry satellites have also been disabled. You might need to be Do we flying. need a... Sorry. Do we need a command code of some kind just to... Um, uh, spring out, if you know what I mean, to transmit to said location. The code book the Gata Outhouse had was very up was up to date by the time it went dark. You should be able to relay your standard alliance codes, and they will clear you again. If the Gata Outpost is still operating at some level. Understood. All right, so uh, with that, uh, Akmar gives you his uh, May the Force be with you before his hologram cuts out. And a little All right. bit. Oh. No, you go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, before we actually go out, I would like to make a 4C check because I don't like walking into a situation blindly. So whenever there's time for him to have actually sat down and meditated on that. You, you would have had a couple of hours. So okay. you, you can actually do that while in hyperspace. So now, if you want to, ooh, oh, that's really good. Um, I guess I'll use. Okay, let's see. I got to use one to activate it, right? Yeah, I got to use one to activate it, and I'll use one on strength and one on duration. So that's two details and like a, a day, <laughs> a full day, pretty much. I'm guessing. Okay. So as uh, you move. I did not to a secluded spot in the sun flare to meditate you find your vision fading into black but then stars begin to fade into existence one by one until you find yourself surrounded by a nice field of stars however in the distance in front of you you see a spider or something eight-legged I'll let you pick uh, okay. It's mostly black, but you see its legs have a hint of a blood red, and it seems to be tied to something. There's a very sh there's a shimmering tether around it that seems to wrap around its uh, ex. Uh, I didn't want to say that because I don't know if spiders have exoskeletons. It wraps around the spider, and then you can see it fly into the distance, waving, twisting in the air. You can't quite see where it's going. It seems to be heading towards one of the stars, but you can't quite make out. But as you start to focus on the tether, you see a red-hot blade held by a mechanical hand just suddenly come down and slice the tether. And it appears the spider 
reacts to it. It's in pain. It's writhing about. But as the tether starts to whip around in the breeze, you can't quite feel, you see it unfurl like it's almost like a rope. And it turns into many strands. And the strands seem to come and coalesce back around the spider and turn into what looks like a web. And the web begins to stretch out again and just wrap around each of the stars one by one as they get uh, further and further away from the spider. And as the web begins to become more solid and uh, coalescent, you see that whatever is within the web starts to twist. You see images you can't quite make out. It's almost like looking at a diamond with all these shimmering lights and images flying by. You can't quite make it out. But you do see in one of the fractals a Mon Calamari cherishing what looks like a small, almost stone object in its hands. You can't quite make out the detail, but it seems to be holding the object in what seems some sort of prayer. And as the vision begins to fade, you hear a voice that you don't recognize, but it sounds deep and masculine. And as you hear it, you feel the uh, chill take place in your heart as you feel some of the strands of the web come closer and begin to almost try and ensnare you. And the voice says, I have been here for far too long. I want to be free, and you will be my vessel. Oh, dear God. I would probably wake in a cold sweat if that's even something killed or can do. I would probably go to the only other person that I know that's ex experienced with the ability of seeing the future. That would be Nardell and I would tell him, I think we should be prepared for trouble, and I would relay my vision to him and see what he thinks of it. Nardell would uh, kind of chuckle and point out that anytime we go on a mission, at least I prepare for trouble, but this seems yes. to be... This could portend a danger. Well, he wouldn't use a word like portend. There's only 8,000 words in the wicked language, and portend is almost certainly not one. Uh, <laughs> Danger, though, far different than anything we've encountered. Um, however, careful not to over or to to read it too literally. Yes, this doesn't seem like one of the literal visions. This one seems more abstract. But I can seriously assume that that voice at the end may be quite literal, and we need to be wary of any danger we come across. You must remain vigilant. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, are you only going to tell Nardell about this? Going to not tell any of the other crew? I might... Uh, okay, I would probably, like, uh, once we're all together, because uh, uh, I'm assuming, you know, this vision happened earlier, maybe after the briefing... I would also tell the rest of the crew, uh, maybe not as in vivid of detail, but definitely tell them that I saw a vision that was uh, hinting at a very unusual danger, something maybe more dangerous than anything we've ever dealt with. And that we should not go in too casually. Well, with that uh, message of wariness given, uh, the group finds themselves emerging. Sounds like some bad background noise going on. Okay, okay I think, there, I think stop. We're good. All right, so yes, you find yourself uh, out of coming out of hyperspace. Just, just ignore that ship right there. I'm limited by my art assets. Uh, into what looks like almost a giant wall of debris. You see space hulks that you don't recognize by any conceivable design, aside from maybe the fact these giant tubes may be engines. Uh, but it also looks like that it's, it's just a giant gravitational clump of mass that seems to be holding all of these uh, pieces of debris here. You see asteroids, space hulks, etc. You even see some fighters from some era you can't really put your finger on. Uh, and as Akbar warned, you are not detecting any outgoing communications that would uh, hint at 
satellites that you may be able to use. So you may have your looks like you're going to have to fly through this blind. I thought we needed to do an astrogation check just to get there. Oh no, you you had the astrogation data given to Pippa. Uh, it was this whole expedition seemed to be very hush hush. They don't want to go to outposts' location to be known by too many people. Uh, I believe Dare would be the most skilled at getting us through this debris unscathed. Yep. I'll um, Dara will say point to will point to like one of the um, I don't know computer stations and will say oh in any chance you can uh, attempt us a map. Uh, that sounds like a plot course action. Sure. In fact, I think I'm going to be bringing back or not because this is the wrong hangout for that. Never mind. Uh. I forget the difficulty, but I know it's astrogation. It's either average or hard to... Yeah, let me do it on the um, Sunflare tab. Oh, Dara's um, got um, her little gizmo, which actually incorporates two boosts. Uh, crew action plot course is average astrogation or hard perception, and each success reduces the setback for difficult terrain by one. That is... What is... Sorry, what is Aro's um, astrogation ranks? Uh, two ranks with a five in intelligence. Okay, um, Navi five and then take four ranks from Pippa. All right, uh, it's going. I'm going to upgrade the check once just by flipping, and I'm also going to put in uh, four setbacks for the check just because it is a dense field. These are setbacks on the plot course. Check. Yeah, the plot course. Okay. Um, I don't think I have anything. Uh, Nardell will, um, seeing that we're getting into a hairy situation, use. Oh! Woo! No, Battle meditation is foiled. Okay, so just a regular roll then. I don't think I have anything that helps with this, so. Let's see how we do. Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Um, um, you forgot the um, two boosts from Dara's Gizmo. Oh, you isn't he getting a from? No, he's, getting a full, he's getting the full ranks from Pippa, and she's got her. Um... Right, so we can't like double dip here. All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got this. Uh, so you're not going to be able to negate any setbacks. However, you do poke around a bit around the field as you're trying to plot this course, and you find there's actually a large opening, uh, probably recently made. You, you see a lot of the debris around it looks like it's actually been blasted away. So the, uh, it almost looks like a tunnel where the debris is just... It's not it's not as dense, but there's just a lot more little pieces you're still going to have to avoid just to keep the sun flyer from being dinged. Uh, so the same number of setbacks, but you will get uh, two boosts and an upgrade on the piloting check. Right. And since I did the plot course, I can't co-pilot him, right? I... Or they're both maneuvers, though. Or, no, they're not. They're actions, I guess. Well, they're frankly, you haven't... Actions, if, if, if Dara was flying into the debris field right now, I'd say you'd be right. However, since you were still kind of skulking about, at least the way I narrate it, so it's hoisted by my own petard, I'd, I'd say you can co-pilot. I can or can't? Can. You may, I guess is a better word. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, cool. Alright, so the difficulty to fly into this, let's see, uh... How fast would you want to travel to this debris field? Um, not as fast as normal. I'd say speed two. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to make it a three red piloting check with s still four setback. Actually, um, I can actually remove two setbacks. Oh, then you remove two. Okay. Any other... Uh, and Alro's skill jockeying is able to downgrade all of those reds, so it's just going to be a hard check with two setback. 
And you also uh, get... And the sun... F- oh, there's no handling on the sun flare without... Joking. Joking. Never mind. It's a uh, zero. So this, just to qualify, you get one upgrade and three boosts, because I'm going to tack on another one for those two advantage in the co-piloting, and it's just going to be a hard right. check with two setback. Right, two setback, and you said an upgrade, which means I'm going to throw in an extra E. I'm throwing in an extra green. If they're all yellow, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just jumping into my equipment and into my gear. Let's see, avionics. Uh, uh, right, okay, it's only the palm and fingers of the user, links to the user's brainstem, cybernetic avionics allows a pilot to connect with the airship or starship's avionics and flight control systems on a digital level. Um, well, interface doesn't eliminate the need for manual control. Of the it vessel. adds that upgrade automatically. It's already calculated. Yeah. Gains plus one. Okay, one ranking pilot. Hmm. Okay. And it already counts that, so don't add another. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, so here we go. Oh, crap. Um, I'm actually going to re-roll that. Okay, so here we go. How's that? All right. Much That's better. a lot better. Yep. Uh, you, it looks like a, a giant piece of one of the larger hulks comes flying through the tunnel and it almost looks like you're about to ram it but luckily some uh, death maneuvering you're able to take yourself around the outside and through and the field. With a, with a few, few um, barrel rolls and flips and stuff. And no showboating here. Aiden will get very <laughs> jealous. All right. I'm showboating. But luckily care. as you travel through the tunnel you come upon a large lucre hulk class vessel uh and you see it actually appears to be heavily modified uh, there are a lot of big gashes in it probably from whatever battle stranded it here or nearby uh but you do also see a lot of docking pylons sticking out here and there with a few ships uh which you can see have regnal and symbiotes the largest of which of course is the giant mon calamari capital ship that seems to be sandwiched between the two long arms of the vessel that seem to come in and Embrace it, almost like a hug. Okay. Um, would we see any li- would we see any lines? Do they have like um, portholes on the Moncal ships? I can't quite remember. Uh, go ahead and give me a hard perception check. You uh, want Nardell to tackle the perception check? Um, if you want. I swear that ship looks like an imper- looks like a forty uh, k. Um... Oh god! I wouldn't be surprised if it was. In fact, the thing in front of it looks like Strike a giant cruiser. space Hulk. Yeah. So whatever is more advantageous, more successes or four advantages. I uh, I I'd, I'd say advantage. You look out and you see that the Mon Calamari ship is. You know, you don't see any lights emanating from it. Its engines also appear to be cold. Uh, you do see lights on the Lucre Hulk all around. Uh, in fact, also, as Nardil starts to look around, you see all, that the Lucre Hulk seems to be the only thing with lights on. All of the ships that are docked with the, uh, you can assume this is Dogata Outpost, uh, are dark as well. In fact, some of them appear to have suffered their own uh, external trauma. In fact, uh, I'll say if you turn all of those into advantage, you see that a couple of the docking pylons have been blown apart, and a few of the ships seem to just be drifting around the shipyard. Um, any umbilicals attaching the ships? Uh, I'm not entirely... They, 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 there were umbilicals that attached them to the outpost, but some of them have been destroyed, and that's why those ships are just floating around. If I'm understanding your question right. Um, you know, like uh, power transfer cables and stuff like that, you know, so the ship wouldn't have to use its own power. Uh, you don't see any of that connecting the shipyard to the other ships, just docking pylons. 
Hmm. Actually, yeah, that's all you see. Uh, there are a few uh, docking pylons that are actually still open uh, if you wanted to pull the Sunflare into one of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead and give me eh, minor debris. I'll, I'll just say you did it. Dare is a good enough pilot. She can pull around the large pieces of ships that are just seem to be drifting around this thing. Uh, so you pull up to one of the docking pylons on the arms, and uh, with a hiss and a click, it seems to react to the fact that your ship parked next to it, and you are attached. Uh, the atmospheric okay. lock seems to be telling you that inside is all clear. Okay, uh, Dara will get out her holocom and call the Admiral and say, um, we are on site and at location. Uh, you get broadcast noise. Uh, okay. In, in fact, given your experience with Battlefield Communications, it t seems to be telltale sign of jamming. Right, okay. Okay, keep your weapons toasty, people. Um, obviously, we've got... Um, some sort of jamming, and they're not donuts. All right, uh, you're all gonna walk out the airlock. Any order in case you meet hostile forces? Nardell will happily lead the way, and Doc will take the back. All right. I was gonna say Darrow will take the back as well. They can have some quality. So then we situate him up in the middle. Hey, she's got longer range now. Okay, so uh, as you step into the airlock, you see it is just one long tube uh, that stretches into the hull of the ship. You see, actually, that the lights uh, in the pylon are on. They seem to be activated right when your ship attached. Okay, um, we'll seal up, seal up Pippa with um, one of our bio codes, fingerprints, whatnot. Just in case. All right. Uh, as you go further down uh, the docking pylon, uh, you reach the door into the hole, and right as you walk up to it, it opens. Seems to be reacting to your presence quite well. And as you emerge into the ship, you, you see that uh, it seems to be a mix of the older Confederacy architecture and probably new stuff brought in by the Rebels. They seem to have patched up some of these smaller holes in the hull, uh, and of course have cut open larger ones to put in dike, uh, docking pylons. Uh, it, it appears quite empty around you, but uh, everything's um, well lit, the lights are on, it's just nothing seems to be happening right now. Hmm. Wow, Derek will say, my mum actually told me about these ships, and I thought I'd never actually set foot in cobbled together parts of one. Wow. It seems unusual that we haven't been greeted yet. I guess my fears were well founded. Yeah, Dara actually pulls um, one of the blasters and keeps it ready. I guess Tillin would probably get out a knife or two. Okay, uh, you begin to explore the chambers a bit. Uh, you, you can you at least saw where you were going. There's a bridge. Uh, oh, hold on, crap, it's not working. Okay, uh, but as you hit another hallway, you actually suddenly stumble upon a couple of uh, humans. Which just to be quite a surprise to see you. It's like, oh, oh, hello. Uh, and uh, you actually, you can tell Hi. that uh, there are rubble insignias on their, I guess you could say, jackets. Um, Dara will approach cautiously. Uh, they're... they're looking at you and say, oh, were, were you on that ship that docked? And they, they point uh, back the way you came. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, are you are you reinforcements? 
Um, did, did we get the name of the um, guy who sent us? Was it Akbar? Yes. Yeah, it was yeah. Admiral yeah. Akbar. Yeah, there it was a uh, Admiral Akbar sent us. Oh, oh, good. Then, then you'll need to see the commander right away. He, he's gonna want. He's gonna need to talk to you. And, uh, okay. The mechanics start moving towards another corridor, can, just just waiting you for fo to follow. Uh, can you tell us anything that's been going on recently? Oh, it, it's a long story, but that Mon Calamari ship you saw was a yeah. It was a tie on horse, filled to the brim with uh, Imperials. They stormed aboard and. It's been a long firefight. We got them contained, but now we're in a bit of a stalemate. Hmm. Can he okay. roll? Can Nardell try to decide if he's being truthful? Yes. Uh, what is your discipline? Two red and... Oops, oh, sorry. One red and three black, uh, purple. Okay. Let's keep the destiny flowing. If anyone has better, feel free to speak up. But I didn't think in this group anyone had a better discipline than that. I got two yellow, but, you know, only four uh, willpower, so. Oh, so. You are better, then. I'm one and three. I'm one and four, sorry. You're two and four. Yeah. Oh, wait, you're... Oh, you're... Okay, so I guess I am better. I'll decide if he's lying or not. Uh, not so to mention... What was your pool? Um, it's two yellow, two uh, green, and I do have an item that gives me a success and an advantage, but I don't know if it would apply. It's more like a meditation band is what I, how I labeled it when I crafted it. it. Is it something specifically to tell if someone's lying? No, it's not. It's, it's more just discipline in general. I, I'd say, I don't think it would apply here. Yeah, I didn't think yeah, it would, but I figured I'd throw it out there. All right. Uh, all right. You, it looks like they're, they believe what they're telling you. <laughs> well, that works. So you've actually crafted yourself a Judge Dread lie detector. Sorry. Not really a lie detector, no. It's no they already like have, a... have a lie detector item. Zevo has one. Not that he needs it, but he's got it. <laughs> Then let's say um, if if they are the you know what's left of the resistance on board, um, they should take us to the you know the wherever the kind of resistance is focused or concentrated. Apparently, he wants to take us to the commanding officer, and that might not be a bad idea to get some information going for basically um did we get a sign and countersign from the admiral or didn't we or didn't we ask for one he seemed to just tell you that your uh, typical alliance codes were valid but that was more for auth uh, authorization not exactly coordination right okay you're not going to get like a flash thunder here yeah it's no wonder they were friggin boarded by imperials though we flew right up to here dock without a single bit of trouble. Uh, you came through a very well, we large don't, hole. We don't have yeah. Um, how far is um, um, Nardell away from Dara and the um, engineers? I imagine unless, yeah, you're purpose, the unless you're purposely keeping short. your distance, I'd say short. Okay, Dara will more or less turn her back to the engineers and say, they could be Imperial, but we, know, we don't know. She'll say that so that um, these guys I've just pinged, they don't hear it. They've given us no reason to distrust them yet. Well, if I Good. heard that. I mean, Nardell agrees with Tillin on this one. As far as we can tell, I mean, there are clear signs of something going on and they've kind of given us an idea of what's going on and they believe that that's what's going on so 
I think that's what we've got yep. to work with. Yeah, let's go, but we'll keep ourselves ready just in case. Okay. Uh, so you, you follow the mechanics and they lead you through more of the facility and you see, you find a couple of more. There seem to be small groups of mechanics here and about, uh, apparently repairing what appear to be a blaster marks, small explosions. It does look like a battle has recently gone through the facility, relatively at least. Uh, oh, hold on, there's still... Oh, crap. Uh, while I fix that, you guys end up here... I know it looks like no one's there. Give me a sec. Uh, and sitting in what looks like to be an old styled uh, Confederacy ship is a rather gruff looking Imperial. No, I'm sorry. Freudian slip. A uh, rather gruff looking rebel commander who seems to be wearing the same kind of regalia that you saw Akbar wearing. Uh, his rank insignia seems to show you that he is a commander. And he uh, turns and uh, as you come in, he, he smiles and uh, walks over the small bridge that seems to be extending over a couple of data terminals where you see more mechanics working. Uh, and extends an arm to shake Dara's hand. Um, Dara shakes his hand. Ah. So she's wearing gloves. It's, uh, it's, good, it's good to see you. Um, we, we've been fighting the good fight, but I was hoping uh, someone would come relieve us soon. Um, Admiral Akbar sent us to see what's happening, what's going on, and we can't um, send a signal out. Yes, un it's un jammed. unfortunately, until the situation is under control, I've ordered our own communications to be broadcasting a wideband jamming signal. Uh, he, and the, the, problem, the source of all our problems has been that thing. And he gestures out of the window where you see uh, the large Mon Calamari ship sitting uh, between the arms of the vessel shipyard. The uh, Mon Calamari Hurricane... Uh, cruiser uh, arrived about a month ago. Looked like it had suffered some serious battle damage during the Imperial reprisal and came in for repairs. However, once we started to assist, it turned out to be full of Imperials. They managed to hide themselves from our regular security detail, and as you can see, and he just used to a couple of the blaster marks here and there about the control room, they managed to get very far. It took a good portion of my men to bring them back, but we managed to contain them within the vessel. Uh, unfortunately, they still have control of the bridge, so while we have, u we have deactivated the reactor, they still have the means of, with whatever generators they may hi be hiding in there, send out another signal. We cannot allow them to compromise the integrity of this station. I have a feeling they must have used what was already on board the Hurricane to know of our location. Yes, um, it could be definitely possible. Um, do you reckon you know how many souls on board? The That class of ship is capable of carrying thousands, but there have been so many casualties on both sides. I'm not entirely sure how many are left. Is okay. there... Is it a reasonable expectation to try to repair the ship, or is it uh, our best course of action, perhaps, to just overload the reactor and destroy the whole thing. Uh, the hurricane? Yeah. Uh, the commander... He seems, to, he seems to understand where you're coming from, but shakes his head. The damage on the ship was largely superficial and uh, contained by Mon Calamari methods, and he actually points to a portion of the ship where you actually... It looks like it's a giant block of ice uh, sticking out of the hull. Uh, most of the damage can be repaired if we are operating at full capacity, and I would rather not cost the Alliance such a mighty vessel. I think Tillin would pipe up. He said, So you're saying this ship arrived a month ago? They're about. Uh, it's but been hard keeping track the of the battle. Days. The battle marks around here seem fairly recent. Are you telling me they hit out on a ship for one whole month before attacking? Well, the battle's been ongoing. 
Uh, but could... the uh, admiral was very insistent that the all clear signal had been given up until only recently. If you had been under attack, why is it only now that you're appearing to be in distress? The they seemed to be fine until communication was cut, which was around the Battle of Hoth. Hmm. If that wasn't clear, it just sounds like you're saying they've been fighting for like a month. But uh, that's what he's telling you. But the communication, I thought, only went down recently. No, the communication went down at the time of the Battle of Hoth, which was right. about a month ago. So recently-ish, but not like. So we just haven't. We just ignored this blackout base for a month. Uh, the rebellion's it. been in a bit of a place. Yeah, it's been, there's been kind of a lot going on. All right, all right. Well, I was under the opinion I had a lot of other different information, so we can we can skip that. And um, you want to so ask about other methods to destroy the Imperials on board while preserving the the hull and and basically preserving the system. There are other ways we could just. There are no Stop. doubt other options, but you would need control of the bridge to utilize them. At the moment, our control is limited mostly to the aft sections of the ship, where we have taken advantage of shutting down the reactor, but they seem to have been utilizing, utilizing other means to keep their uh, generators or localized power sources operational. Daryl would say, what type of gas do you have, um, like knockout gas, we can spread through the ventilation system? We're a shipyard facility. Everything we have that we could use in gaseous form would just be toxic. And in fact, we probably wouldn't be able to pump it through the ventilation system because a lot of them are flooded. It was a purely Mon Calamari ship. Flooded with what? Water. As a amphibious species, the Mount Calamari sometimes flood part of parts of their ship, both for native reasons and it serves as an excellent hole patching mechanism. Should there ever be a breach, and again he points to the giant to black ice. Yeah, So it's like we need uh, an insertion team. Yeah. Can you sh get us like a 3D readout of um, the bridge and surrounding areas? I can give you a map if that's what you need. Um, yeah. Can you? D does he have a holographic? Um, Bay um, area, so, you know, like a hollow tank or something. I uh, there's one in the command center, yeah. Okay, did I say can we um, have a look at the bridge area on your um, hollow terminal? Uh, yes, he he pulls it up and says this is, this is the schematic scan we acquired when the ship pulled into the facility as part of standard procedure. It doesn't record life signs, if that's what you're asking, but is your... Yeah, I was actually going to say, that was going to be my next question. Uh, yeah, he can give you the structure, he can't tell you where things are, as in living things. And uh, at the mentioning of uh, standard procedure, Doc will uh, pike up and say, um, uh, during standard procedure, does that not include security protocols to verify the vessel? The security protocols were carried out by the telemetry satellites when the ship came in. It Everything checked out on their end. They, the Imperials must have acquired the codes. Granted, if they had seized the hurricane while it was already on its way here, then they would have had everything they needed. Only personnel identification was required, and uh, they seemed to be able to pull that off when they docked. Though you would have to ask the security chief, though he was one of the first casualties. Security chief alive or dead? Dead. He was right. the one to verify, okay. try to verify if the hurricane was on the up and up, and died for it. Right. Okay. How convenient. Yeah. 
I wouldn't say quite convenient. It seems very rather, rather planned. Cruel, cruel imperial efficiency. Do you have Do you have any um, body down in the med bay, recovering? Our medical facility is full to the brim with living casualties. We could not afford proper uh, retention of bodies. If you're looking for an actual corpse, he may be somewhere in an airlock or ejected. I, uh, oh. No, we just need a few living souls. If you want the injured, then... I can direct you to our medical med bay. Um, yeah, Dara would like to, if that's okay with everybody, go down and speak to a few of the um, injured. Because uh, there may be some questions, you know. All right, uh, you guys go along with that. I see no reason why not to. Yeah, and Doc, since being there, he'll he'll start performing, you know, assisting with the first aid if we're going to be there. All right, uh, you come into the medical facility and find that it is a, a rather small facility. It looks like it was probably only made to help with, uh, you know, typical shipyard injuries, not for. Uh, actual battle casualties. Uh, so it's rather small, but it is filled. Uh, several people look like they're just in a comatose state, while others look like they seem to be nursing very... Uh, they, you don't see exterior wounds, but, you, but Doc can tell just with his medical expertise that these people seem to be suffering from muscle cramping uh, odd neurological s symptoms. So nerve damage? Yeah, it looks like it. Now, would Doc be able to tell if it's a chemical causing the nerve damage, or if it's, you know, like something physically cutting off the, the nerve, like a pinching of the nerve? Uh, you would have to do a bit more of a surgical inspection. Basically, med medicine roll. Um, Doc will probably go to the person that seems to be suffering the most of the nerve damage and see if he can, one, assist, and uh, two, uh, take a look uh, to get a better look at the nerve damage. Okay. Uh, as you near this person, uh, they seem to be kind of in a permanent cramp. Uh, even with it looks like an IV connected to them that seems to be giving them a muscle relax relaxant, they seem to be permanently tensed up. Uh, but go ahead and give me uh, hard with two setback due to his just physical condition to inspect him. Medicine check. Nailed it. Double triumph. All right, you see actually two layers of damage here. It looks like one of the the first layer was a stun blast from typical uh, weaponry, just a stun bolt he took. However, what you notice also is some of the nerves appear to have been fried, like a very powerful electrical circuit was run through him. And that was probably the state he was found in before when he was brought here. Uh, in fact, from that, you can tell the electrical charge is similar to... Hmm. So it's electrical, electrical damage that is causing the, the nerve damage. Yes. It appears that he was knocked unconscious by a stun bolt and then shocked. And that's what caused this state. Uh, for your triumphs... Okay, I got it. For your triumphs, you can tell that the telltale signs of stun damage, basically the shock the nervous system 
takes but doesn't exactly get damaged by is uh, more, it appears to be a source of weapons commonly used by the rebels, not the Imperials. And the shock seems to have come from a biological source. It doesn't look, if it, if it was a mechanical source, it seems like it just should have killed him. But the fact that the nerves are damaged, but he's not dead, tells you that there was a weaker source that probably is resistant to electrical radiation. Like, so maybe like a, a species that naturally conducts electricity? Yes. Like an electric eel or something? That would be a accurate guess. Um, uh, was that using up both of the triumphs? Yes. Okay. Uh, could I potentially make a xenology uh, check to, to see if I recall any species that um, predominantly use electrical uh, current as a form of defense or attack? Uh, hmm. You may, but you the problem isn't exactly finding one, it's narrowing down which one. So it is going to be harder than probably you might think. I would love to help you out with that, though. All right. Um, I only have one rank. Um, yeah, I have a rank. Too. Nardell has a species database. Add some boosts. You can also add his force rating, but I don't have any ability to skill the cis because I just have two greens. So I don't know if you want to borrow the species database, maybe that would be helpful. Uh, that sounds good. What is it? One. Boost, two boosts. I think it's two. Let me just confirm. Um, species database. I just saw it. Maybe I didn't get that. I don't seem to have it. I meant to get it. Didn't get it. Sorry about that. Good luck on your own. So no worries. Use all those intelligence. Uh, and what is that? Oh, never mind. You have the same as me. Okay. Okay, never mind. All right, so uh, what would the check be? Hard? Daunting? It would be daunting with... What is the destiny looking like? Yeah, that's fine. Just uh, daunting with two setback for sorting out the good from the bad. Or from the plausible from the implausible. Uh, but you can take it... Uh, uh, actually... Oh. Okay. Uh, answer to Tillin, no. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Two successes. You are able to tell that this sort of damage, given that uh, it is localized around the person's midsection, is a common hunting tactic of... Come on. Really need to get this thing settled. The Dogon Eels. Uh, not native to Mon Cal but native to one of their colony worlds. Uh, the Dogon eels are electric eels that live in lower depths that uh, are so proficient in providing bioluminescence that they do possess an electric charge that they have honed to a hunting tactic. Uh, and their common tactic is to approach their prey, wrap themselves around it, and then shock it to death. They need it. Uh, their teeth are also of a metallic variety, so they can actually send an electric charge through their bites as well. That sounds wholly pleasant. Uh, yes. Uh, apparently there is a Dogon eel somewhere. You can't hazard a guess and as to why, but you can identify its source. Well, what I... I mean, I, I guess I know what a Dogon eel is, but what I know as a person if the the dogon eel is strictly uh uh water or is it am amphibious it's water based it, okay it's not amphibious basically fish. so either personnel were getting in the water and were being shocked or someone was harnessing one to um to to physically shock someone uh both plausible guesses all you all you can tell is that a dogon eel did this damage and also, before that point, the person was hit by a stun bolt from what appears to be weapons commonly used by rebels. Okay. 
I believe I can hazard a guess as to what happened. Is this man was attacked by your animal, and his allies tried to save him by shooting the eel and ended up hurting him. Oh, when did you get that investigator tree? <laughs> Sorry, I've always been really good at putting things together like that. All right. Uh, so you're you're able to identify the source of the injuries, but unfortunately, uh, you don't you don't seem to be able to make the guy any more comfortable than he already is. It seems like the muscle reaction is the closest he's going to get here to treatment. Damn. All right. Uh, there are a few other injured. Uh, if you want to take a look at them, but aside from that, that seems to be all you've got out of the medical facility. I, I mean, if, if we're going to be here for a minute, sure, but if not, then we can move on. The Dogon Eels? Custom made. You're not going to find it on Wikipedia. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> that, that doesn't sound good already, no. No, it doesn't, does it? It's already made. <laughs> All right. Uh, as long as uh, if you stay here, uh, sorry, hold on. Uh, after you spend some more time here, uh, one of the nurses is actually going to come up to, uh, I guess, Doc, since he's the only one actually doing something in here, and says, "Are, are you just going to assist us, or are you going to?" Repel our borders. I can't do both. Well, she she shakes her head and just goes, "I'm sorry, but I I know proficient people when I see them. I've I've brushed I've encountered spec force before, or spec ops. I don't. She pick one. Uh, I've encountered their like before, and I know I I know how they can turn the odds. I just it seems like a waste to have all of you in here while you could be saving the hurricane. Uh, but there are heavis. If you're all around, Doc. Yeah, I mean the yeah. med bay is like medium <clears throat> sized, so it wouldn't be that hard to yeah. hear. Yeah. Um. Dara would say we're just trying to find out. Um what type of force we're up against, and then we're going to see what we can do about it. Uh, the nurse seems to take that explanation on, as it is and just holds up her hand, apparent, apparently trying to signal she didn't mean any offense as she goes back to her work. But the Would nurse be... does pose a good point. Perhaps now that we have the information, we should move on. All we know is that there's a Neil present on the ship. And Imperials, I don't believe we're going to get much more information than that. No, so, um, right, plan of attack, then, gentlemen. I assume since we have the most control in the aft section, we board through the aft and then... On the aft section, yeah. Work our way forward, I think. It's just, uh, this is a matter of keep it simple, I think. This so seems as sound a decision as any. Did we get a copy of the map from the commander? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so Dara will take it on a, you know, have it on a data pad, and she'll just bring it up on the data pad as we're heading towards the aft section, and she'll discuss tactics on the way. All right, so uh, there are a couple of docking ports that have been stuck into the aft section of the hurricane. Uh, you, you've noticed that there are a couple of other docking ports that are meant to kind of connect to places all over the ship, but those have been destroyed, much like the other docking ports in other parts of the ship, shipyard. Uh, so you head in through the aft, and as you get closer and closer to the ship and both get in the ship, you start seeing an armed presence. Uh, you haven't seen this anywhere else on the shipyard, uh, but you do start to see troopers in kind of light garb with guns may apparently maintaining a perimeter and uh, as you walk by they give you a firm nod some even salute and you uh after you enter the aft section you notice immediately that this is a mon calamari ship that has gone under some heavy modification 
a lot of the corridors seem to have been cluttered with uh, piping or extra armor or power couplings that seem to be running probably to the hastily attached turbo laser batteries. It appears that this is a ship that was not made to be a warship, but was turned into a pretty impressive one. Yeah, Daryl will say, um, yeah, they actually convert their, um, you know, um, cruise liners into warships. Impressive. The uh, Mon Cal designs with rebel ingenuity. Oh, she's got shields upon shields. Um, as soon as one shield goes down, there's a backup to replace it. All right. Uh, so you continue through the aft section until you reach the tight corridor, as you see on the right picture. Uh, and then you see there is actually a makeshift barricade that's been erected there with a small grouping of troopers behind a few panels they seem to have brought in from other parts of the shipyard to block off the entrance and uh, as they see you approach they uh, move a couple of the panels aside to make room for you and uh just now it's just like beware past here it's uh anyone's game thank you very much soldier <laughs> damn it i was on mute as well don't really say thank you All right. Uh, and as you continue in, you hit another tight corridor where you're looks like you're going to have to go, if not in single file, then in a very staggered line. So who would be going first? Nardell will stick in first. Uh -huh. Field gauntlet out. No. It's, not, it's not the um, the one that uh, Erdo has, but it's just a, a very defensive. Fist weapon. So I've been kind of calling it something similar. <laughs> uh, we could set our tokens up in the marching order. Um, Dara's going to pull the little mirror thing, that, that trick that she pulled back on. Um, what planet was it? Oh, God. We were going through the hospital. Yeah, I mean, Nardell can see through walls, so that helps too. You're going to have to teach me that one. <laughs> All right, uh, so you guys move in. Nardell's taking the lead. Uh, James, go ahead and roll me a... Actually, I have the thing right here. Oh, uh, I know it doesn't go out very far since I only have the basic power, but I also would like to keep my sense up to try and sense any life forms within short range. Okay. If you want me to yes, roll it, I can. Us. Uh... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and roll it, and you're able to activate it with just the one, right? Yeah, I only have the basic power, so... Since all living things within short reign, including sentient and non-sentient. Okay, uh, you actually feel like there is a large source of life beneath you, beneath you, for like, just a moment before it seems to just quickly dash away. Oh... However, as you further down, the, as you further down the corridor, uh, you're able to sense that you're not able to see it yet because the lighting is rather dim. But you're able to sense that there is a grouping of life forms ahead as well. They haven't moved, but they're just there. I would inform. Do we Nardell know how large a dumbgond eel is? Uh, about four or five feet long. But rather slender, so That's more like a big. snake. Yeah. Silhouette one, basically. Um, what no, boy no, does it have to be snakes? Far sight to try to take a peep at the guys ahead of us. Snakes and spiders. And oh, he can see. As if it weren't dark, out to medium, I think is all. Uh, let me just double check. Far sight. One pip. Ignore effects of darkness or blindness and see normally to medium range. Okay, what you see ahead of you looks like a grouping of stormtroopers, guns raised and pointed at you. They oh. apparently seem to be under the impression you can't see them yet. Foolish little stormtroopers. Uh, I guess we're all to get into cover. 
I uh, would do that. Not much cover, frankly. <clears throat> it, the hallway's a lot like the picture below the one your tokens are in. How how okay. far away are they? Uh, short, since you're able to sense them. Okay, uh, you're right. Yeah, they would be short. Um, hmm. I mean, Nardell would want to jump into action and silence them before any alert can be given. I was I was just thinking that maybe I could like do the classic pull a tube down and it creates like steam or smoke or something so that they Ooh. are a little blinded. Uh, <laughs> yes, you just, can, you just can, a slight little thing. You can totally do that if you want. That is going to be a difficult. check. I am going to apply difficulty to that check though because it is a mounted object. Okay. Uh, uh, I guess I should roll my stuff then. What's the difficulty going to be? Uh, if you use discipline, it's going to be the sword of the object. I'm going to make it average, but it's going to be upgraded twice. One's because I flip in the other one because you feel odd. And you said, what silhouette is it? It's, it's kind of two, but you're pulling down a piece of it it's so you're affecting a silhouette two object but the thing you're creating is silhouette one so i'm just kind of making it making a difference okay cool mm, doesn't work it shakes a little bit but i guess i'm not gonna bother to flip for this uh as the uh tube trembles a bit you feel droplets of water hit your face so uh oh perhaps i shouldn't do that yeah, it, it seems like you're not going to... It's There's water in there, but probably not steam. <laughs> and there's probably little eels swimming around there as well. Oh, I don't think so, but... All right, so I will not be doing that. It's a good thing I failed. <laughs> um, Dara will pull out a concussion grenade. All right. Uh, how, uh, she's second she'll, place. she'll say... She'll say to Nardell, shall we give him an explosive time? Nardell would caution people that we should, you know, try to do this quietly. We are, after all, kind of infiltrating. But it okay. might be too action. Action is not beyond his interest at the moment. Okay. So we shoot them. All right. Go all ahead right. and roll initiative then. You can. It's going to be cool since you're starting this ambush. The ambushers become the ambushed. Ambushed. So do we Good have point. to use cool? I've always been kind of up in the air on that. The thing. I'm pretty yeah. sure you have to use it. We've just been more liberal with that rule because it's like it makes the difference between. Talent now that lets you choose. Yeah. It. It's. It's the sort of thing where it's like vigilance is. You're more ready for surprises. While well, cool is, you're more ready for. You have steady hands. Do we get some boosts for being able to kind of start the ambush? Uh, yeah, I'd say two. Actually, no, sorry, sorry. Before you roll one, since they're ready to attack, they just haven't attacked yet. Yep, that makes sense to me. Are we getting boosts? I can't remember. Is You're that getting one boost. boost? One boost. Okay. Okay. Boo. <laughs> All the side dark the side. Children. Oh, sorry, sorry guys. <laughs> um. So it's going to be 4.2 for Talon? Yeah, I guess so. Remember, you can just add those successes automatically, guys. Oh, right. I keep forgetting about that. And I'm so sad because I end up using it. All good. Remember the strain. Um, did someone not roll yet? Yeah. Oh, no, we're only five. Never mind. Yeah, you're good, Jack. Sorry. Okay. I... Uh, let's see. My first group rolled pretty well. Yeah, it looks like 
Oh, they actually tied with Tillin, and in that sort of situation, PCs win. So one PC we have to go first, if I can get all this right. Two, actually, no, it does five or four point. Oh, okay. So yeah, Nardell and Tillin won the first two spots. Um, I mean, Nardell would want to get in there and try to do this quietly, but if someone was going to rip a shot, I suppose. I could throw a couple knives at him, or throw at least a knife, and... I mean, just if, if, try and be if, silent about it. If we're trying to be silent, then Doc should probably go first. That works if you've got a plan, yeah. I will. No, I, I, I'm saying. Uh, never mind. Um, uh, mm -hmm. I guess I'll try and take him down silently, at least, you know, a silent opening shot, and then Nardell could move in if he uh, wants or someone else. How many actually? How many units of um, guys are there? There's two. Nardal sees six people. Stormtroopers. Could be a couple of minion groups, though. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Because of the narrow corridor, they were engaged with each other, but short range from you. Okay. Uh, do you guys want me to try and take them down silently, real quick? I mean, I can at least get a good, decent hit on first hit on. Yeah, Derek can get a good hit on him as well. And Doc could do explosives, but, you know, they're explosives. <laughs> we're, we're trying to do this quietly. I think the quietest one out of all of us would probably be Nardell or Tillin. I don't know. Alro, you got, like, ninja stealth techniques? No, Alro has many blasters. <laughs> I'll give him an opening volley, and then whoever else wants to go after that can, just to see where it gets us. Um, so I guess I'm going to try and throw two knives, so that'll be considered, like, auto-fire. So the difficulty is equal to my silhouette plus one because of auto-fire. So do they have any adversary or anything, or any defenses? Adversary one, but that's uh, actually and also... No, nope, they don't, just adversary one. Okay. Uh, I won't. Okay, so let's see. I will need to flip and use that other one so that I can activate magnitude. And that will be... Oh, hold on, let me just do this real quick. So you're just throwing... Okay, that should together. be... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm basically... Throwing two knives at a one guy group, if it's a minion group, whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's five damage, or no, seven damage twice. I don't really know if it has like a critical on it. <laughs> I've never really seen force uh, powers critical. It's either it's five or it's infinity. I don't remember which. Uh, infinity. So, so, okay. either, so either way, no crit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just wasn't sure. For the three advantage, well, what, what do you think would happen? What sort of awesome thing would happen uh, after throwing two knives at the group? Well, um, maybe they were caught very off guard, and uh, it creates some openings for whoever attacks next, and I can pass a couple of boosts along to them. Okay. Uh, as your knives fly, you hear one cry, you hear one cry out in the darkness. Nardell can see one of the stormtroopers fall, and the other two seem to be distracted by his fall. He actually kind of gets in the way because of the narrow corridor. So yeah, I'll say that I'll give uh, basically a boost to the next person, and then a free boost to whoever. Wait, don't attacks. don't you need to use two of those to auto fire? Oh, you're right. I do. I'm sorry. Doesn't so that, then I'll... doesn't that also mean you need to add another? difficulty die to that i did that was the thing the the difficulty is zero oh, and uh huh. i added a purple and then you upgraded it once to red because it's still at zero items okay so you use two to auto fire and the one passes a boost right i forget about auto fire thank you for catching that right now. then i'll only pass a boost to the next person who goes um dare I take it No one's disputing. Go ahead. Okay. Dara's going to take the boost as well. And she is using Guns Blazing. And I've already taken the strain for it. 
and she's going to let rip. Oh, yes. Okay, so that is 12, 13. You, hold on, you missed a red. Yeah. Did I miss a red? Oh, sorry. Yeah, the adversary won. Right, sorry, I thought it was um, thingy, so please ignore the purple. Okay, so you actually have four successes instead of three. Right. Um, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 damage. Tw and um, I'm using Twin Linked, and I actually get to use one advantage for Twin Linked. Uh, no, you're, not, you're, using, you're firing the second blaster. You don't have Linked, do you? Um, I have Guns Blazing. Right, that's the fight. Linked is a different thing. You're firing sorry, the second blaster. Sorry, they're paired. They're paired. Yeah, they're paired weapons, and I only need one advantage to use the paired. And for the other, um, do I, right, with the triumph, I'm going to crit, definitely. And with that advantage, um, let me see, what can I do? Can I throw that as a boost to the next person, or do I need two to do that? Well, take a step back. How much damage did you do, and can that damage be spread before, between both groups? Um, right, let's see, just step back. Uh, damage is 12, 13, 14, 15, that's 16 damage. Okay. Um, paired weapons, I reduce the advantage by one to a uh, minimum of one to use paired weapons. So that's 16 twice. So basically, there's and I've nothing. Used one advantage. But there's nothing in there that gives you an auto fire quality where you can target more than one. No, enemy. but she does. There's Spitfire. Um, there's Spitfire talent. There's can... Spit. There's... Yeah, there's that. So you can target two, more than one enemy with it. If she yeah. has it. I have, yes. Okay. So you, you with that first blast from your first blaster, you got rid of one group, the damaged one. Yeah. Now how much damage do you do with the other weapon? It's 16 again. Okay. You, you kill two more stormtroopers in the other group. Okay, and the triumph, I'll get rid of the other one. All right. Yep. All dead. Well, that went poorly for them. I thought they were going to have an ambush. Yeah. I shall retrieve my nines. Uh, you have a turn now, though, Jack. I think they're all dead. Yeah, there were only two NPCs. Oh, I didn't know. Sorry, I didn't resume. Both groups were all dead. Sorry. Yep. All dead. Okay. Uh, okay. You continue down the corridor. <laughs> Uh, looking over the stormtroopers, they, you have to kind of clamber over them since they're all over the hallway. Uh, but eventually, sorry about the mess. Um, would it be possible for Tillin to just pick up one of their helmets and like try and I don't know pull out the radio or something so that we could listen to it? I'd say put the helmet yeah. on, but I don't think my head would fit. <laughs> That's what Alra was gonna do too. Um, the helmets are actually coded to their DNA. That's weird. I see that kind of thing in Rebels all the time, well, stealing their helmets. Problem yeah, number I, two is that you were already told there's a massive jamming field. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if maybe they had something, some way that they were communicating. Well, okay, you, you go over, you take off one of their helmets, Alro inspects it, and you actually hear nothing. Not even the jamming signal. Like useless stormtroopers? All right. All right. As you continue down the corridor, you start hearing uh, the rushing of water. Mm. And uh, yes. after a little bit, you come upon just, it looks like the hallway just sinks into the floor and it's flooded. Like how deep? Uh, the Because of the, well... Nardo, well, I guess we could use his far sight. 
Uh, it looks like it continues on as a hallway for just a little bit more, but then it opens into a chamber that's actually beyond your sight. Oh, I meant how deep is the is the water like full height? Uh, it looks like you'd have to immerse yourself in it to keep going forward. Yes. So, like, um, if we go to go into this question. water, oh, sorry. It it fills the chamber in front of you. Okay. Okay. If we're going to go into this water, I would like to throw my sense out again because earlier I did sense something that seemed to be moving beneath us, and this seems like it might be connected to that same area. And we know that there's a crazy electric eel going around killing people, so this this might be where it was going down. I want to be ready for that. Was that it just now? Yeah, that was me rolling okay. the sense. You I, I just want to sense the same massive life force in front of you in fact it is it's big like it is so big it kind of fills up the chamber in front of you uh that's weird i would point that out to nardell and see if he could actually see it I, could oh yeah that's a good question the medium range nardell can actually see tentacles but can't quite see the entire thing this is more a bit of a narrative constraint here, but I'd say because Nardell can, because Tillon can sense a piece of it, it senses all of it, while Nardell, up to his medium sight, sees what you would see if actually range band wise. Right. And I would just be like, it's massive. We should tread carefully. Definitely agree. I mean, we can try something to scare it away. Are there any power cables running through this area because what we could try and do is like put each end in the water and send the current through it that was under the opinion the power was out it that is if the power was on. i mean could nardell try a survival check with the force because he can use the force on survival to lure it away you know try to put the idea or to no better put the idea into his head that we aren't food Hmm. I would say yes, but you would have to get into the water to get closer to it to do so. Well, before you do that, um, can I suggest, because Doc has, um, it's a slug thrower and detonator rounds. So I, I know that, you know, concussive blasts, you know, vibrate through water and tend to be physically more damaging than, than you know, if it's outside of water. Yeah. I like uh, could I potentially detonate a detonator round in the water to make it run away? Uh, I just want to put out the idea. Do we want to be creating small explosions on this rickety ship? I mean, pros and cons, yes. <laughs> Alra will uh, kind of look around at everyone and just say, what if it's nice? I mean, this is what if this is its habitat? And, we're coming in here and, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what Nardell's trying. Yeah, I'd be like, all right, Alro, since uh, you're a fellow multi arm being, why don't you go give it a hug? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was joking, don't you do it. You might, you're probably going to die. <laughs> What's Alro's brawn? <laughs> One. <laughs> uh, you know that if you were in there, you would only be able to hold your breath for about five minutes tops. Or one round of structure time. Yeah. Well, it's not like uh, she can really tame it or anything, but she's just saying before we start blowing things up. I'm not looking to blow it up. I'm the one vouching against that. But I'm also pleading caution. Yeah, I guess Nardell will be willing. Yeah, he'd be willing to hop in to try to influence it. And um, um, I'll stand at the edge of the water in case Nardell looks like he's <laughs> getting in over his head. Oh, very funny. Um, Daryl will hand over her briefly for um, Nardell to use. All right, I was about to ask. Anyway, okay, so Nardell, just Nardell for the moment, is going down into the next chamber. Yes, and I'll try and keep my senses on them so that I can 
for lack of a better term, keep my eye on the situation. Uh, he'll have to go within short range. He's actually going to have to get out of your... Sh unless you go into the water with him, he's going to exceed short range. Okay, well then, forget yeah, it. But I can track him with my <laughs> cybernetic arm. Like, can we can we still actually kind of see Nardo? Uh, because of the darkness, no. Like the I have uh, my, I guess my mask or something has like built-in dark vision, but yeah, Keldor have dark vision. Uh, hmm. I trust in me and trust in the Force. All will. The Force is my ally. Yeah, Force my ally too. I just want to make sure that I'm also helping. To I mean, it's up to you. I mean, technically, it only just removes like a setback or two or something like that. So, I mean, if it's still too much, then I understand. So, if uh, I could, I flip a destiny to say I got my um, survival wilderness survival kit with me. I need an explanation as to why. Um, basically, she has um, microfiber wire or rope. So you could actually, you know, tie around Nardell for, like, for him to pull on to say, get me out of here, just in two, case. Two tugs means pull me back. Yeah. Or the whole being moved and jerked away from us in a very violent manner. That too. <laughs> yeah. Mm. The problem is, I, I just can't see... Why a reason why you would bring a wilderness survival kit to a space station? Right, yeah. And plus, I mean, do you have the room for it? It's like five encumbrance. It's pretty heavy. Let me see and do some jiggery pokery. If not, <clears throat> I can just utility belt, monofilament, rope. Uh, rather than, let's, for the sake of time, I'll, we can just say I'll row flips the destiny to use that to have it. Okay. Rope. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so you Alra was able to pull that out of uh, her mystical pouch and uh, tie it around Nardell, and Nardell dives into the water. And as he gets closer to the tentacles, he can see the full splendor of what. Uh, this is in the bottom picture, by the way. In case you're zoomed in a bit too much. I am zoomed in too much. It looks, oh, it's Cthulhu! Uh, Basically, yeah. It looks like a large octopus, yes. Uh, its eyes are somewhat... It looks like it's barely bioluminescent. Like, it was only after you dove into the water and got closer that you can actually see very small flickers in its eyes. And as its tentacles start to get closer to you you reach out and try to connect with it to the force but first you just meet this icy cold blast as the water seems to turn below freezing make me a hard fear check hard fear okay Hi, some that's some confidence all right, uh, you you easily suppress the chill within you, and just glare back at the creature, some fierce intimidation as the tentacles space out a bit. And as for your connection, is is that an opposed check or is it just a straight difficulty? There's not like a, this isn't like a mechanical power. I'm just basically trying to use a survival check, but because he's able to add his force rating to it, I'm kind of saying that he's going to reach out, you know, instead of just kind of trying to walk up to, you know, imagine you're trying to like convince a lion you're not food, you're going to like walk up to it with like, I don't know, a steak that you're going to throw somewhere else. Kind of like that idea, only, you know, more magical. Okay. I'm going to have this be three reds and two setback because of, uh, territorial nature. You're in my house. What are you doing in my house? That makes sense to me. I'm just debating if I should remove those <laughs> or not. Um, if it has to do with I, animal taming, I'll, they'll certainly do it. Uh, let me look. Actually, that's a good point. I add boosts from... Do you have anything that takes away for animal... I would be using sense danger to remove it. Um, 
uh, off the top of my head. I can remove this two setbacks. No, that's for that. Tracking, no. But I can add um, Hunter, 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 Hunter. I love that show. Two, two boosts for uh, the Hunter Town. So I'll leave those on there. I've got a lot of other stuff happening. Uh, and then I'll flip. And was your flip to make it through red? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that's two more success or two more advantage. Okay. I'll have that be probably it, advantage. Advantage. Yeah. So you put. Okay. So how how do you want to convey to this creature that you want it to leave? Oh no, I didn't really want it to leave. He just wanted to convince it that they aren't food. Uh, hmm, all right. Like to leave us alone if we were to cross through. So, okay, what you actually see, since you want to make it understand, you have to kind of use its own language. So what yeah. you actually see in its head is that it has specifically kind of been conditioned not to eat Mon Calamari. So you make it think like you're just a hairy Mal Mon Calamari. Yeah. And in fact, that worked. you actually, while you're doing this kind of connection, you see... What do you see? It's I can picture it in my mind. It's just so hard to describe it. Uh, you you see kind of maybe it's memory. You see it trapped in a what looks like a large room, but you can see it recognizes it as a cage. Food comes in through a specific door at specific times, and it's just kind of languishing there but it gets sometimes it gets agitated enough that it does something and the Mon Cal's have to come in and sting it but then you also see there was a moment where everything went dark and then light started coming in by the door one by one and it heard some very soft muffled noises that you can kind of recognize as blaster fire and then uh, small sparks come by its door and just start circling around the door again and again until finally the door just falls down and the th creature is able to emerge and suddenly it sees many non-calamari things and it's been e it seems like it's been roaming about the larger corridors and eating a lot of things for uh, the past couple of weeks. Hmm. Fantastic. You see, actually, through its eyes, it has not been eating Imperials. It seems to be eating anything that's just not Mon Calamari, but you don't see any Stormtroopers or Imperial uniforms through its eyes. Can I tell if that's because it is ignoring them? Because, I don't know, because they're plasticky and gross? Or is it because they just haven't come into the big flooded tunnels as far as you can tell it just hasn't seen them okay that's kind of what i figured all right um so yeah i guess nardell will swim back to the rest of them and tell them that it is safe ish <laughs> just think like a am that's gravelly vague. voice rubbery skin all that kind of stuff do your best nixon impression you'll be fine <laughs> okay. All right. So well, continue on. You've avoided the challenge of the giant doom creature, but the pro there is the secondary problem of the way forward is still underwater, and you are not entirely sure how much of the passage ahead is flooded. Could Nardell swim ahead and scope it out with the force and his good brawn? He can hold his breath a pretty long time. Would you go alone? Um, so this is kind of a question I've always had. I know that like Keldor have like top notch rebreather technology and they can't take their masks off and everything. So I was wondering if like they also allow them to survive underwater. I mean, I know I can survive in a vacuum for about five minutes. I think your device is more a scrubber than a tank, you know? So I don't know yeah. that it would extend your underwater endurance. What's Killen's brawn? Um, probably just like one. 
Yes, yeah, one. I'm gonna get the Force and Destiny book attack. Yeah, so and, and Doc has a cybernetic respirator, so it, it's really the same question, but you know, different. I, I'd say both the cybernetic respirator and the Caldor rubriator will, will yeah, I'll say it pays off here. Especially if it, it, because if the rebreather is a scrubber, then it probably has some sort of aquatic interface. Yeah, I mean, Keldor rebreather technology is like the best in the galaxy, to my knowledge. So because they have to be, they 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 die without it. <laughs> so yeah, for for the sake of this mission and for the sake of expediency, since our rent clock is running, I'll, I'll go ahead and say uh, the cyber respirator that Doc has and Tillin's rebreather will allow them to swim. Uh, okay. Then I suppose I can go with Nardell. Doc also wants to come. Dara is going to use her rebreather, um, her breathing mask. So she has her own mask aside from the rebreather she gave to Nardell. Uh, no, it was just a breathing mask that she had. Okay. Um, well, hold on. Is does, is Nardel right. still able to go if Dara has that on? Or is she taking the one she well, gave to Nardel? Nardel has four brawn and can add his force rating to his resilience checks. Um, so he should, I mean, you know, it's not a forever underwater thing, but he can take a pretty long swim and hold his breath. And I mean, worst case scenario, Doc and Tellen can just do, um, you know, swimming back and forth with the respirator or the rebreather to, to escort people. Uh, you neither of you would be able to take yours off. The cybernetic. No, he's saying like no, we, take, right we take Dara's, take Nardell, come back, take Alro, come back, take Dara. Uh, Alro can do the same rebreather. All right. Who needs something to breathe? Other than me. I. Uh, If Dara and Nardell are... I, 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 here's what I'm still confused on. Is there a rebreather and a breathing mask that Dara has, or is it just the breathing mask that she gave to Nardell for it's just, that? It's just the breathing mask. Okay, so Nardell currently doesn't have anything. Except for his just brawn. I mean, his plan was to just use, yeah, his kind of... To, he's not trying to go forever, but at least to get down there and take a poke around. Okay. So. Nardell holding his breath, Dara with the breathing mask, and then uh, Tillin and Doc yeah. with their second rebreathers. Are you all going to join Nardell on his scouting? I would at least, yeah. I'm not going to let Nardell go by, so. Okay. If you want to join Nardell, go ahead and move your token by his in the bottom right picture. Let me just... Find my token. Okay. So we have our small away team. Okay, after you get past the creature, it looks like the chamber that you wanted to get down to, according to the map, does get a bit narrower, but it is still underwater. That is one round. Nardell is able to see a bit further down the corridor and sees that there is a small light source ahead. Uh, as you get closer, the other people can see it too. Uh, does that far sight power let you see through darkness or through objects? I mean, or both objects and darkness? Both. I have the base power lets you see as if you it's not dark or you're not blind. I have the upgrade to see through things and to see fine. So I can see through objects at medium range as though we're transparent. I can also spend a pip to make fine details on a single object at medium range. Okay. Uh, then as you go ahead and see the light source, you also see that in the corners of the corridor up ahead, there are more stormtroopers lying in wait. Uh, they appear to have a canister that seems to be the source of the light. And these guys are in the water, or they're just on the other side? They're in, still in the water, further up ahead. Okay. 
I'm just gonna read. So I guess Sardell would signal to be able to stop and then to head back to so we can make a plan kind of back where we can talk. I guess. All right, you all return back to the surface. I say that in quotes with Doc and Alro. And so yeah, Nardell will share that he saw. Oh, the creature. In the meantime, yeah. is just wondering. Yeah, we, we just lost David. Must have been eaten by Cthulhu. Or his baby. It knows that we're not food, guys. You just got to play it cool. It knows you're not food, but also knows you haven't given in to the madness. Should we give David a second here? Yeah, I mean, you can. You guys can still talk amongst yourselves while you're waiting. Okay, Dara will like um, bring out the um, data pad and just you know set it to the level where we are. And so, right, okay, with the um, large room where Cthulhu's child is. Okay, from the room in front of you, which is kind of like a long shaped room, it takes about a round to get through if we did this in structured time. Actually, it would take two rounds, go figure. Uh, it's another kind of medium range from that room further down, and that's where the stormtroopers are. So they're kind of like from where you are right now, extreme. Uh, they are extreme. Hmm. And there's no, as far as we can tell, way to get to where we want to go and go around them. According to your map, no. Hmm. Didn't hear a word. So I guess we've got enough underwater supplies, for lack of a better word, for does is Nardell the only one without a technological solution? I think Alro is too. Okay. Yeah, you're very faint. Yeah. Yeah, I am have to get on my phone for now while I'm waiting for my computer back on i had some terrible blue screen <laughs> okay so how much how much are you not aware of or rather what's less uh, than you heard it went out as soon as we got to the point to where like nardell could see some light so we had just got through like one round of swimming okay so nardell has discovered that extreme range from where alro and dark doc were waiting back in the surface area there is a group of stormtroopers with a canister of light And now you've all regrouped to strategize. Okay, okay. Hmm. Well, I mean, we could continue on with the whole being quiet and sneaky, right? How about we get from where we are to the other side and then plan? Well, we need a plan to get past the stormtroopers. That's the trouble. Mm. If we just needed to go through, we could easily get through by kind of just relaying the breathing mask or whatever. But our problem is once we try to do that, they're going to try to shoot us. Right. Uh, How many are there? Nardel saw eight. Eight. A lot more than I can handle. Yeah, same here. No, just very faint, um, mate. Can you feed them to the octopus? Yeah, that was my thought as well. You could certainly try. I mean, as far as Nautil is concerned, it hasn't eaten them because it hasn't seen them. 
did someone suggest Nardell try to convince it to go have a snack? I mean, I can't it's hear the David. Only one really can. Yeah, you're as um, JP said, uh, you're the only one who can. I'm the only one that can. What? Um, you know, invite the uh, stormtroopers for a snack. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I just if I just can't hear David whatsoever, other than like the faintest of murmurs. So if he said that, I just had no idea. Um, yeah, Nardell would be totally willing to try to touch its mind again. All right. Uh, let's see. You've convinced it to make you think it's a Mon Cal, so it's going to be the same three red difficulty to just dive in and try again. But you're not going to have to deal with the setback. Cool, okay. I just want to make sure I've got my pool set up again. Um, one, I flipped that. Yeah. Uh, reroll? Do I have a survival reroll? No, I'll just... You know, I think thematically it makes sense to take a little conflict for doing this. Um, but I'll, yeah, I'll use just one to, uh make a success there uh as you reach out and touch the creature again to cause it to feast on the stormtroopers you find you tap into something far more primal than hunger you make it angry angry at the stormtroopers and as it looks down the corridor you see it pause for a sec before its tentacles just sort of flare up like almost like a spider about to attack as it just lunges down the corridor and you see bright flashes and you um, you see bright blue light flicker for a second before everything goes dark and because it's beyond your far sight you don't know what's happened but suddenly the light you saw flickering has gone out just testing hello Yes, yep. we can hear you. Jesus. Um, yeah, so I guess Nardo will swim towards that hall and try to see down it and check what's going on. Uh, you see body parts everywhere. <laughs> uh, it looks like it not only ate some of them, but tore up the rest. In fact, you also see the somewhat sparking remains of a Dogon eel. Just limp. It looks like it's been torn in half. Would it be reasonable to assume that the octopus creature was the one that caused that bit of injury? Uh, it certainly would be within its power. All right. Uh, yeah, so... And but the way to the our our way forward looks clear now. Yes, in fact, you don't even see the creature anymore. It looks like it took this opportunity to slink off. Well, now that it's found a taste for Imperials, it you know, it's got a lot of exploring to do. Uh, yeah, so Nardell will swim back and inform everyone that uh, the problem has been dealt with, as it were. All right, so, oh, dear. All right, points to Dr. Doolittle here. So now we just need to figure out how to get um, Alra down the water as well. I will look and for herself, she could build a contraption. I was going to say, um, once Dara's across the other side, someone can go back and um, let Aro use her breather. Um, as uh, as they're doing that, I think Till would walk over to Nardell and be like, "What's this?" And he would pull off some thread that was left on him and be like, "This is what was from my vision." As you move your hand and apparently grasp the thread, no one sees what you're holding. That's awkward. 
You see this, yeah? <laughs> no. Huh. What, what, why are what, you just what? holding your fingers together? There's nothing there. Alro's going to flip through frequencies on her goggles. Does she see anything depending on the type of vision she has? Or... Uh, you see some... Oh, no. If you're looking where he's holding, no. You don't. No, nothing. Okay, okay. And nothing That's... around us either that looks weird? So, no. so, what's this thread? Like, is it like a really thin, like, spider web kind of thread? or? It looks exactly like the thread you saw on the vision. I just wasn't sure, like, what that really looked like. I know it was kind of silvery. Kind of. And whatnot, but... It's almost like... It's... I don't... I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, but it is kind of like a silken thread, but when you look at it, it's almost like it's black... It's a silhouette with a black core and some light that appears to be behind it. Something like That's a shadow of its former self. Un That's unusual. Does it have any... Like tensile strength, that does it pull apart or does it stay? Uh, as you pull it off Nardil, it seems to kind of just not wither, but loosen and slacken in your grip, almost like it's was dead. If you try and pull I... it apart, it's that it just unravels. Um, I mean, this is out of character because you know doc can't see this but i mean would could it be safe to assume that it's feeding off of the force of nardell and Dylan? well here's a strange thing i mean it's on nardell he can't see it only Tillon seems to be able to see it and that's very unusual desire to study this in greater detail Is I mean, there... we try sense on it. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Can I can I try sense on it? It's it's all roll sense. I I sense it. <laughs> Does that do anything? I don't know how that would affect. As you focus your sensing energies on the thread, you see it almost looks like you're flashing back to your vision, the wide web stretching over the starry sky and the thread it feels like it gets thicker in your hand it feels like it you don't see it change and you can feel it kind of wrapping around your palm again you don't see this happening you just feel it and then it kind of tightens around your hand almost like a vice grip and you can feel the bones in your finger start to clack together uh go ahead and roll me a daunting fear check I think that would be um discipline. Oh crap. Uh okay. Uh da, da, da. I didn't have my sheet open. Uh, so also right upgrade it once just to keep this Death. daunting. So that's four, one red, five. three purple. Okay. Oh, whew. Okay. All right. Take I guess I'm not afraid. Take the threat as strain, but as you feel your finger, your hand almost start to get crushed, you you just tighten your fist around the thread and then just open your hand and you see the thread scatter and the feeling stops, but your vision seems to focus on a hazy image the thread creates as it starts to disintegrate and you see the spider again, but it has the face of a man with sullen dark eyes and you hear the voice again I will be free and you will be my vessel I would just say uh, after Tillin let out his little scream and probably fell down to his like one knee and then the pain subsides he would just be like we're not alone here that's well, this all I is could, that's probably all I can think while all this is going on, can I roll for re um, strain recovery? Really? <laughs> Just chillaxing? Uh, this doesn't really yeah. seem like a place you could recover strain, frankly. Unless you feel like warming okay. the water and taking a nice soothing bath. <laughs> um, Pop open now, Rose yeah, Generator. That... Okay, this could, that can wait. All right. 
I, w- I would probably express my concern, Nardell. There seems to be something skilled in the force here. These webs. It seems to. Uh, Tillin's kind of scattered at this point a little bit too. Just it wants to escape. Well, as with the Imperials, I suppose we should ensure that. Well, even more so, I think we need to decide what it is, because the goal is for this ship to return to service. And if there is a powerful evil force, we must prevent its spread in the galaxy. Is this some kind of creature that anybody may have any inkling of what it is? Like a xenology check of some sort? I know somebody was good at that. If I describe it to them, would they be able to give us any kind of information? I mean, not good. I can try. If it's even allowed. Uh, Tillin describes the spider he saw, and Doc, you were immediately hit with that Tillin may be coming from some psychosis, uh, because uh, such a creature just can't exist. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Uh, Doc will start poking and prodding him with his finger, you know. I, I guess your, your, your standard... Um, you know, flashlight in the eyes to to make sure he's not suffering from a concussion. And um, no lore check. Would a, would a lore check help us? As opposed to zoology? This might just be something nobody's ever encountered before. It's quite possible. I'm just, you know, asking. <laughs> I'd say yes, but Nardel would have to participate. Yeah, I mean, Nardell isn't helpful, but he can participate. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Um, I misread. I don't have I don't have any points in lore, actually. You and still might have like, a higher hand than anybody. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, could, I could make the try, but it, I, I feel like lore is one of those things that... I don't know. <laughs> you might still have just come across or heard something you tendered. I don't know. It's up to you. Up to you. Like old, old. I, I'm just very concerned about this thing that seems to want to take over my mind and or body. Maybe some old spacer tales or something like that. Does uh, Narda have any ranks in lore? In lore, uh, no. I have. Dara has. Well, in order to this check, Narda has to be able to take part. I mean, I can. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. Really pissed. But that's all I can give for lore. And then still assist, that's not a problem. So that's probably what, one boost? Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, but who's making the check? Um, I assume it would be Derek, because she actually has rank. Has a rank. Right, but she's got a rank in two intellect? Right. Three intellect. Three versus Aura's five, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm just asking, like, I don't know if it's if Jack will allow me to make the roll without a rank and lore at all, or... Uh, you would need to yeah. have some accents with lore, so yeah, you need at least a rank to do this. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Okay, that's fine, go for it, D. It would be a formidable check, straight up, five purple. Okay. Um, I'm going to flip then. Hmm. Nardell knew something helpful. Fourth threat. Yes, Nardell remembers stories from uh, back before he became chief and before he left his home world that there was a parasite on the ice mother an ancient dark creature that the whippet never came up with a name for because it was best left forgotten but it crept into the stories here and there to show how the ice mother while itself pure could be twisted to evil ends and the creature the creature's weapon was a web and it used it to entangle 
the spirit of lesser warriors to pillage the Ice Mother. Now, Dara also has her own story from Scylla about a spider that took away the heat of the sun and caused the world to freeze and what caused the Chiss to become what they are. It wrapped, it wrapped the sun in a dark web and deafened its light. The common thread feeling that the spider in and of itself is a great evil, but what it could do with its web is a greater one. Uh, upon hearing of this, is there any more of this web on Nardell? No. Daryl will say, I'll be back in a minute, I just need to change my underwear. <laughs> and there's nothing really left on me, right? Yeah, the when you were able to triumph over the fear that took you, uh, you caused the, the thread you pulled to dissipate. Hmm. It seems you're able to fight it off with nothing more than a strong will and force of mind. We should be careful moving on forward from here. All right. Uh, logistics aside, you're able to scout ahead and discover that the water that the flooding stops at a certain point and without any effort you're able to ferry yourselves over. Uh, as you continue through the ship, you notice that uh, there's nothing in your way with Nardell's uh, far sight and uh, Tillin senses. You detect, like Tillin detects life signs moving through the tubes, very short-lived bursts that sort of flash into his range and then out as if following some strong current. Nardell can actually look into the tubes and see small bits of light, but they're moving by so fast he can't discern them. And eventually you come upon what looks like a lift, and according to the schematic, this lift should be the one that takes you to the bridge. You see no guards, just the lift. I suppose we should take the lift. Around, and unfortunately none of his sense upgrades are on the... You uh, your audio pitched out. Couldn't hear it. Oh, Nardell's using sense, uh, but unfortunately doesn't have any of the right side of the tree, so he can only sense out to short. Uh, there's nothing in the lift. Like, the chamber isn't even down yet. You have to call the elevator. Oh, okay. But once you do, you're not going to have any um, time. Like, the door's going to open right when the lift shows up. Nardell's going to step to one side and draw the blasters pointing at the lift door. I mean, what are the and chances what someone's the... waiting in the lift for us? <laughs> Until I would say as he kind of steps off to the side. Uh, I assume you just get ambush positions then? Yep. Yes. Yeah. That's how we've Stand stayed right alive so long. Me. Okay. So, you summon the lift. You're this whoosh, 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 As the lift arrives and the doors immediately open and you see nothing. The lift is empty. See, I told you it'd be absolutely fine. Can he says stepping up from behind cover. One level below the bridge and then you sense? Uh, the special feature with Mon Calamari vessels is that they're very one-two locations. This goes directly to the bridge, nowhere else. Got it. That's, that's cool. I mean, we got to get to the bridge, and as far as we know, this is the way, like the only good way to the bridge, right? Well, yeah, that's, like, why, I, you, that's why you had to take this specific path, because this is the only way to get to the bridge. So to some degree, that's, there's not much we can do about... It actually well, makes it a very, that's a very defensible design. That's pretty smart. I mean, can we do a say a computer's check to override that system and you know make it stop doing emergency? Well, emergency the thing is, it's thing. there are no other floors that connect to that shaft. None of them would have doors. You would have you to would be opening it. Okay, okay. Let me be clear. In theory, yes, you can stop the elevator before it reaches the bridge, but you'd have to cut through not only the door but also the wall of wherever you ended up to try right, and get right. under the bridge. Okay, just making sure. I mean, I'm well, fine. Going. At some point, we got to do it, so we may as well. 
Do jump it. in. Doc will li quite literally jump in. Okay, let me just get your tokens together. Don't be surprised. Is it me or can I hear echoey between um, David and Jolt? I don't hear anything. I don't think I hear echo between um, David and George. No. You no I'll echo for me? Okay. Echo for me? No. The okay, it's clear now, don't worry. The elevator comes up and up and up. And then as the doors hiss open, you immediately are hit by blaster fire. Roll initiative vigilance. Seriously? Yep. I love, I love it. Okay, vigilance is my best one. Don't forget to put the successes you get with rapid reactions into the roll. Help out right. our I think, nice uh, GM assistant. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do uh, that because I'm already so high on strain. Ugh. I will, that, I'll use that force die to give myself a success with 4C. All right. So. Have you moved a sofa yet? Uh, you'll be moved over in just a second. Okay, to... Oh, you, you can. You, as long as you can remember the strain, you, you'll be able to do it in a sec. Yeah, yeah. Four, five, five six. six. Everybody, Jack and George, sure. remember to triumph for your free maneuver on your first turn. Ooh, these people roll poorly. What was that? Uh, remember your triumph for your free maneuver on your first turn. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. You are able to dodge the blaster bolts quite easily. You hear the zhuzhump of a very slowly timed stun bolt and are all able to take cover in the ends of the elevator. But as you peek out, you see, I don't know why it's doing that, that you're being fired on by Mon Calamari. We're being fired upon by Mon Cal? Yes. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, is this going to be like the cell cat that got turned insane in KOTOR? <laughs> Should Tillin try to sense their surface lots and see if there's something funny going on? We have no, three We can afford to, like, burn one on something a little more investiga uh, investigative. Uh, I have the basic power. So I can yeah, get emotional I mean. states. Oh, not sorry. Actual thoughts. Sorry, yes, emotional states, not thoughts. My bad. Uh, the the two groups you kind of see in these chairs, or basically in those command stations, are short. The one Mon Calamari that is kind of near the viewport of the bridge is medium. Curses. I would very quickly say though that to Nardell's like that one right there is from the one for my vision and then i guess i would try to sense the surface thought of one mon cal at least I'll go for it you can have the first turn yeah okay oh boy seems important i will flip and take one conflict and one strain okay i uh... just to sense the thoughts you hear the thoughts you kind of sense are panic fear, uh, distrust, but as you reach out towards what's in front of you, you feel something pulling back behind you, and you just, you feel like you have to turn your head, and as you look to what you have trying to see what is pulling you, you see a giant, just, mass of thread, the same webby thread you pulled off Nardale, try and reach out towards you. No! And I would probably try and, like, move and dodge away from that. Look out, I would say to everyone. Uh, it's like this threat's coming to get us. They look back and see nothing. Go ahead and roll me a... You only used one. Hard fear check. Upgraded uh, ones. Hard fear? Yep. Upgraded ones? All right. Oh, I should probably put the other dice. Okay. 
Uh, as as the tendrils try and whip themselves around you, you actually lunge out of the way, and almost like a giant claw, the tendrils ensnare nothing and then recede into uh, the shadows. It's trying to get me. It's coming for me. Uh, actually, and you hear, a wh with those advantages, you hear a whisper in that same voice. I see. I'll just yell. I'll never let you get free. To frickin' Tillin right now, this thing is basically the darkness that he was always afraid of facing. <laughs> Alright. That's Tillin's turn. Yeah, so Tillin looks crazy. Like, super crazy right now. Okay. Um, I was gonna take aim at them, and... Um, well, does the shell have stun ability on his pistols? Yeah. Okay, good. Just, just making sure. <laughs> um, yeah, she's going to brace as a maneuver. And she's going to fire back. Okay, uh, at who? Um, that, them. Okay, uh, adversary one, no defense. So that's one red. I take it? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, no need for sniper shot. Um, yeah, she's going to do guns blazing again, and she's... Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Guns blazing. And here we go. Ouch. <laughs> Loads of advantage there. Um, right. Damage. Where are you? Weapons. Okay. 12. That's 13. Um, with guns blazing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. She's definitely going to use the link. Um, sorry, dual settings for her blasters. And one, so that's one advantage gone. Uh, she's going to activate. Yeah, they shot us. I shot back. Um, yeah, two for activating crit, if I can. And I'm going to use two to, to take down my stream. Yeah, what? Yeah, she's... Are, okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Uh, so that's what? One, two, three, five. And the last two, I'm going to give the next person a boost. Okay, if I did the math right, two of them have been taken out. The other one looks like he's starting to cramp up. So he did get hit by a stumble, but he did not, not down yet. Right. All right. I guess Nardell will start out. Let's see. With I guess terrify. Always a good start. That seems to be our uninvited guests theory. Um. Oh. So they are all three disoriented, but none are. Immobilized, sadly. Okay, so we all got one setback for how long? Uh, I th let me check if I that advantage might need two to extend it. Terrified. T so terrified. For, so unless T you find something else, it's just for this round. It's just one round. I I just found it. Okay. All right. Uh, can you um, do the um, or can we see their like stun damage and stuff if that's possible? Uh, I'm keeping that in my pocket. Okay. But you've there were three on each of the banks, and you've taken out two on one side. Okay. And then he'll run to the whoop, to the main one. It's all just short, right? Because we're in the. Uh, no, the the one farthest away from you at the bottom of the picture is medium. Oh, okay. 
but the, I will people on the side take short. two maneuvers to go over to him, uh, which makes him make a four difficulty fear check. Okay. One, two, three, four. Which I will... F- Ooh. No, I won't flip. I will. Um, didn't you just miss your boosts? On, um... Well, that was terrified. Not sure. All right, okay. Right, okay. All right. Uh, two threat. Uh, so he he just backs he, off and, and glares I'll at you. Oh, you No, I have a thing that I can do with two threat. Okay, sure. Um, so no escape means he can't take a free maneuver during his next turn. All right. So as you he he take he takes a step back and seems almost locked in place in like a defensive posture each as you just charge at him. But as you kind of throw your full weight into that intimidation, he just stares you down and and points his blaster at you. It's like we'll not be intimidated by traitors. And I guess as an incidental, Nardell will call out to you know, stun the guards, um, but we need to figure out what's going on here, so don't... I, just as a qualification, uh, it they are quite obviously not guards. It looks like more they are just the command staff. They're armed with pistols. Yeah, yeah. Just want to make that clear. Yeah, no, I, I assumed as much. But yeah, basically, stun, for lack of a better word, the minions, um, we need to, to figure out what's happening. And then you have uh, one turn. Uh, I think our Mon Cal, uh, commander is going to take his shot at Nardal. All right. Oh, he can't move oh, out of Engage, though, so that's going to add difficulty. Well, he can. He just has to spend strain for any maneuvers. Oh, okay. Then he still take two maneuvers, but each one costs strain, basically. Okay, and it would take two maneuvers to disengage. Uh, no, I didn't use... I didn't have a spare maneuver for grapple. Okay, uh, so he'll take the one maneuver to get out of engage, but he'll take just one strain? Two. Okay. And he'll aim at Nardal. Any defense? Uh, I have defense three, and with that flip, it's upgraded twice. Defense three, and then it's... So it's one red, one purple, three defense. Yep, and three black. Okay. All right. He hits for uh, six damage. Uh, yeah. He he kind of grits his teeth, and you see a lot of his um uh, kind of jowls vibrate. All right. Next PC. Uh, Alvaro will go, I guess. <clears throat> She'll target this uh, other group. The untouched one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just the one adversary, nothing else. And where, how far from them? Uh, you're short from them. Oh, cool. You're only medium from the commander in the back. No defenses? Nope. I guess they could be taking cover behind their chairs, but too late. So that's 13 stun damage twice. Uh, Pierce, too. I don't know if Pierce applies to stun, though. But... I've never heard it either way. Though I guess, eh, never mind. There's no point in trying to suss that out now. Actually, 16 twice. No, not 16, 13. Okay, 13 twice. That makes a bit more sense. Okay, uh, just like Dara, you knock two down and hit the third one, but he's still up. That's it, that's it for me. All right, uh, NPC, PC. Two NPCs now. Okay. Uh, geez, it's only one person for each. Uh, both the NPCs are going to shoot at the people that shot them. So one's going to shoot Dara. What's her defense? 
one and one, and I am going to take strain to use dodge. So one defense, and you're going to upgrade once. She's using dodge. Yeah, how many ranks does she have? Just the one. Okay. Oh, it actually hits. Go figure. Uh, again, just uh, six damage. Okay, that's three. And it is strain damage. They're using their stun, stun bolts. Okay, does that go through soak? Uh, no. I mean, you can apply soak to it. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Then three damage. Okay. And then the other group is going to shoot at Auro. What does she got? Defense. Nothing? Key defense. Okay. Jeez, that hits as well. So, again, six damage. Stun damage. All right. Next up. It's like, well, not. They, they, they keep shouting at you that they're not going to let you take the bridge. You're all horrible traitors. Um, Doc uh, doesn't have any weapons that do stun damage. Uh, and instead of shooting at them, he's going to shoot at the floor, let's say at the feet of this last one standing. Um, and shout. Uh, uh, this is the rebellion. Uh, surrender now. Okay. Uh, that's going to be coercion. Uh, that's fine. It's going to be hard. Upgraded once just because I flip. He seems especially resilient, but I'm also going to add two setback. Actually, yeah, three setback given the situation. <laughs> so two purple, uh, one red, two black. Three black, jeez. And don't forget your free maneuver. It's like, that's what they've been telling us this whole time! Traitors! Mm. And so he actually shoots at you. While you shout, as you shout that, apparently he's undaunted, so you have to kind of whiz out of the way. So just take that two threat of strain. And we're back at the top, unless anything happens between rounds with three PCs. Nothing's happened. Yep, three PCs go. All right. Um, so I guess, yeah, Nardell will bustle over to this guy. I will use grapple this time, so I need to take that strain. Uh, and I will brawl him. All right. Uh, adversary two, but other than that, nothing. Cool. Let me just check. What should I have? I'm trying to remember if my glove has accurate or anything. I don't think it does. Nope. Um. Force rating, no aim though. Hot dog. Um, so I will take that into uh, a another advantage, at least to knock down. And I guess three to crit him. So here's the crit. I don't think Nardell has vicious. Actually, it doesn't matter because uh, Nardell can drink any crit. So let me. I forgot to open that up one sec. Because Nardell, for one strain, can pick any easy crit. Um, and I will pick. Don't you usually just go with staggered? Generally speaking, that's what makes sense. Um, yeah, I'll stagger him. All right, then I'll take that back. So, and the damage, therefore, is plus one, plus three is eight strain. Okay. Did yeah. you just knock this guy down? Yeah, 
you kind of rushed him, knocked him, and uh, set him on the ground. Looks like he got the wind knocked out of him. You just see him on the ground. Get, it looks kind of just like you pulled a fish out of the water. His mouth is just... <gasps> It'd be kind You're of funny terrible. if it wasn't so sad. <laughs> All, right, All right, two more PCs. Yep. Uh, there we'll go. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean, traitors? You heard us, traitor. So you're saying that those guys on the station are Imperials? Kind of hard to do this in the middle of a firefight. Uh, go ahead and well, give me. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to say, what? How are you going to start this conversation? Are you going to still be shooting at them while you're trying to talk to them like this, or? No, she'll be actually in cover behind um, one of these things, and she's actually just, you know, back to the wall and saying, "What do you mean, we're traitors? They're um, they." Who's on the station then? Okay, go ahead and give me. Uh, geez, what's leadership imposed by? I'm going to say, is it? I think leadership is imposed by discipline, if I okay. remember correct. Then it's going to be the same as the coercion check. Uh, hard with three setback. Okay. Discipline. That's that's not bad. Yeah, discipline uh, makes sense. Discipline. You said hard. Yep. And two setbacks. Three setbacks. Unless Three you can setbacks. get rid of one. No, I can't. But I'm going to flip and add one of them. And here we go for the roll. Woo! Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, let's see. The captain staggered for the turn. So after you ask that, the Mon Cal's are going to the last two are going to look at each other and they're going to take cover by their consoles and they're actually going to stop like trying to get pot shots at you and just yell back we don't know what the hell they are but they turned on us okay they said you were imperials and well, as you can see we're not a... yeah as, as we can see yes definitely you're not because there's no way an Imperial would treat my species or yours with any kind of reference. No. So I do sincerely and humbly apologize on this mistaken part of ours. We were sent by um, Admiral Akbar to find out what was going on over here. And so he'll ask you for proof, but you do have like a copy of the transmission Akbar sent you, so you can easily play yeah. that. And uh, yeah, with, and she'll slide it across the floor. Uh, if you know what I mean. You hear, as it, as it just... yeah, you hear some clattering, and then you actually hear the message start to play as one of the officers picks it up. And uh, it, after that, they they stand up. They weapons are down, hands are up. It's like, if you're, if you're not with them, then we gotta talk. I they, think I know what's going on. They they look over at their captain, quite obviously now, kind of pinned by Nardle. And uh, uh, as he 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 still looks like he's gasping for breath, but after hearing what has transpired, his arm kind of is just waving next to Nardle's head, just trying to call a ceasefire. Yeah, Nardle will let him up at this point, but. Kind of stand right and ready to intercede if there's a any attempts of tomfoolery. I I think at this point, Tillin may very well have connected all of the pieces, and he would look to people and be like, "I think I know what's going on." Ever since we've arrived on this ship, I've been assaulted by some sort of entity that seems to claim to be able to control people according to the stories that Nardell and Dara have told. I think the traitors that you speak of have been infected by this creature. The people who sent us here were most likely infected as well. Uh, the captain 
Actually, now now that everything's calmed down a bit, he can share with you his title. Captain Modicon. Uh, as you as you say that, he he nods, and uh, that seems logical. Once we arrived, we already found some of the crew acting strange, and when we started to prod, all hell broke loose. We've, uh, some of the, it, it's almost like it was a civil war. We couldn't tell friend from foe. That's why we had to retreat back to the hurricane, and I did my best to seal off what crew I could protect. I don't know how many outside the bridge survived. Did you so, did you see any of my crew? We saw none of your crew, but we saw several stormtroopers on the way here. How do you explain that? Oh. Oh no. Things were confusing back when the fighting was most intense. People reported seeing things that others did not. And sometimes we all saw something we did not believe. It was only when I recovered this, and he pulls out the stone token you remember seeing in your vision, that everything started to fall into place. Men I thought were my enemies turned out to be my friends in disguise, and my friends turned to be enemies. This has been protecting me, maybe us, since we all seem to know we are not our uh, we are not foes. Uh, I guess Tillin would ask very politely if he may inspect it. He'll give it back. I have no intentions of taking it. Uh, Monokun will be standing very close by you, but he'll hand it over. That's fine. I just want to inspect it and see if I notice anything unusual about it other than it being a stone. Go ahead and roll me... Roll your force die with this, but also roll me a hard education check. Oh, education. That's one of the ones I'm actually okay at. Alright. I will... Roll. Uh, so how can I use those force pips? Can I flip them into light side if I want? For successes? I'm not sure how you want uh, what what you want me to do with those. I, uh, you you can. D Hold on. Do you want to use the dark side, or would you be willing to use the dark side in this current investigation? I can't exactly tell you how that how what the result is unless you go that far. Yes, I would be willing to use the dark side because we need information. Okay. As you start to inspect this object, you can't quite make out what it is. You can actually tell that you have your hands on it. It's not exactly stone. It's petrified coral from a reef. In fact, you can see some sort of... Uh, there's some bits of bone, probably from decayed or dead animals, that fish that died on the coral and then were consumed by it. Uh, and you see the carvings in it. You can't translate them, but you have this feeling in your gut and as you start to you try to search that feeling as you inspect this coral and what you don't quite see you uh, you see it in the corner of your eye you see the threads start to approach you again but before you can react the threads start to surge up by you but the token seems to force them back like, you just feel it pulse in your hand, and the threads all around you are just disintegrated. Tillin would just look and be like, Your theory seems to be correct. Every time this creature has attempted to assault me, I've been able to see these iridescent threads that no one else has been able to take note of. And I just saw them just now as I tapped into the four. I was... Uh, as I was inspecting the stone, and it defended me. From where Nardal is standing, and this is kind of the advantage coming into play, he can, he he can't make as much, he can't, he can't translate what's on it, but the carvings make him feel like this is a 
kind of like a charm, something akin to the totems carved on Tua. Tula. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, so Nodo will share that this, I mean, it seems like there's some, not like a spell exactly, but there is some power involved in this trinket. I suppose I would look over to the captain. He is a captain, right? Yes. I would say, Captain, I know that this has been protecting you and your men, but if we were to utilize this weapon, essentially, against this creature, we may very well be able to end the threat on these ships and even save everyone who's already been infected. Are you sure the device is even that powerful? If it isn't powerful enough to defeat the creature, it could surely protect us as we defeat the creature. We could save everyone here. Uh, Doc will pipe up and say, but who who will protect, or what will protect them? We will, once we've defeated the creature. But what is this creature? We don't know, Dara. Don't it's... have all the answers yet. Working on it. And then she'll turn to the captain and says, what the hell was that thing you had down in your swimming pool type thing? Uh, swimming. He, he looks at you a bit quizzically until you describe it, and he says, oh, that... Those were our giant sophonics. They're um, uh, guard dogs. <laughs> Quite effective. Yes. As you can imagine... As a rebel cruiser, we've been suffering boarding actions more often than not. Those creatures are released as standard procedure when we suffer a boarding action and, well, usually take care of the problem. We tried to release them this time, but we were too late. Now they're just roaming free. I would just like to say out of character, the Mon Cal are so freaking cool. <laughs> but, okay, so did we ever get an answer to the stormtroopers, or is that... Have we been hallucinating them? Would you like to go back and look? Uh, not right now, but I mean... All you've got, it's like what you've told the captain made him think that the they have been seeing things that have either been something different or something not there. It was only that when they got close to the token that they were no longer suffering that effect. Right. Well, do they have any idea where this creature could be hiding? If we seem to be... We were not succumbing to its effects until after we docked, so it must be somewhere in the shipyard. Hmm. Though, the shipyard itself is massive, and who knows how many ships are still docked with it. Quite a few at last count. The only way I imagine something like this could spread so quickly is through the air. But its webs seem to be the primary cause. There's no telling how those things actually get around. Oh man, this is crazy. I have a really crazy idea. I got a really crazy idea as well. Not Mine might be crazier. Force. Well, let's hear your idea first, because mine might be straight up suicidal. Yeah, that, that, that was it. Don't use the force, and whatever it is won't appear. Yeah, but that's kind of the problem. We want it to appear. <sighs> All right. So I would walk over to Nardell and be like, Nardell, I have an idea that could be exceedingly stupid. But it may very well get us our answers. Uh, Nardell would be open to hearing it. I could try Shipping, and... Hey, I can do stupid. Since I'm so far the only one who's ever communicated with it and heard it, perhaps I could try and reach out to it and communicate with it. If I can get something, anything from it, perhaps we can find it. 
Um, you know, it's worth a go. I well. Hmm. Um, My only other it, thought is maybe it's in the ventilation, but that's a... Right. At no point have we gotten any inclination of where it might be, Jack, in any of these visions of it or connections? No. Shoot. Um... I think Nardell would actually say that that's too risky. Like, given our lack of experience and almost total lack of knowledge, I think I think it's too risky to try to you know initiate contact. I mean, it may be risky, but we have to deal with this creature. If we don't, everyone here could kill each other, and we have no other way of even contacting it, or let alone finding it. And if nothing else, we still have this to use against it. He would hold up the stone. Yeah, oh, and true. there's also no way to contact outside for help. Yeah, I and mean, I guess given that, you have a good point. So Tillin would hand you the stone, or the coral stone, and be like, if I completely lose it, just do what you can to use this against me. And hopefully it'll snap me out of it. Nardell would ask what he means by that, because at this point Nardell would think the best way to use this then against him is to just, you know, clobber him with it or something. <laughs> <laughs> the presence of the stone is apparently capable of banishing the uh, influence of the creature. So just bringing it into my presence, maybe even into physical contact in worst case scenario, should be sufficient. So okay. we, we can try it. But it may be what you need to do. So at that point, I guess Tillin would try and step away. Like everyone, you should probably move back. <laughs> I don't want you to be infected by this. Maybe he goes back into the elevator. Yeah, sure. It's... Actually, Daryl would say, is there something else other than an elevator? Because in the end, we're going to have to use the elevator to get out of here. Yeah, there doesn't really seem to be anything other than the elevator. It seems to be kind of a straight shot. I mean, once you get into the elevator, it seems to just be a long line of command benches until you reach the, like, captain's chair. So, like, you could, it seems like the only place you could actually enclose is the elevator. I mean, we could always try to tie him to the captain's chair and, you know, in case he gets out of hand. Last person who tied me and up then, got and several times, so... I mean, tying me up isn't probably going to help. Well, we could always stun you afterwards, after something bad happens. Yeah, well, let's just try and do this and see what happens. I'm sufficiently... I believe in Nardell and being able to take me down, should the need arise. So, I guess I will enclose myself in the elevator, and then I will try and reach out to the creature I'll even taunt him and be like fine you want me where are you to project yourself into the force you must tap into the darkness call yourself a beacon so it's going to be a check <laughs> with your force power and you're going to have to use the dark side to get this effect all right, I will use that dark pip then. Do you need me to flip or take strain or morality or anything? Yeah, you're gonna have to take conflict because you're still tapping on the dark side. Uh, right. So the full the full effect of using the dark side. But if you roll all light side, you're, well, hold on, I I need to give you a difficulty. It's oh yeah, I need a difficulty. Yeah, it's gonna be a full force power check, not just a roll of the force die, because you may it may okay. just decide you're not worth it. Uh, go ahead, roll me your discipline against... I have to go back and check. Was it like hard or something? No. <laughs> Two red, three purple. Can oh I meditate such that Nardell would be focusing trying to help 
You can, but Nardo will be opening up his effects. Yeah, the kind of the point the of this effect. is is to oh, yeah, sure. consolidate that makes the sense. risk. Yep, no, that makes sense. All right. Okay. So, do you want to activate the the? Pit? Yeah. Okay. I, I will activate the pit. So well, you sit down and meditate to try and center yourself and call the creature out, and astonishingly you feel the tendrils begin to come in again and start to wrap themselves around you. And when you look and open your eyes, you see a man standing before you whose face matches the face you saw on the spider. He's clothed in what looks like orange. Uh, you see him clothed in, it looks kind of like just a patchwork of mechanics garb, but you can see the faintest hints of orange through small scrapes in the clothing. And you see... He looks like he's trying to hold himself up to a picture of nobility, but when you look at him, he looks thin, haggard, and uh, hungry. You feel, there's, you feel there's a hunger in him as you see the threads just pouring out of him, almost like there is hair. And he looks at you and says, What makes you worthy of the Diomon? I have already fought you off multiple times. <laughs> and he laughs at that. And he says, You have fought what I consider as natural as breathing. I have yet to turn my attention to the rats scurrying around. Why are you doing this? I have been held here for far too long. I will escape, and you will be my vessel. Where are you held? He smiles as he kind of takes a few steps towards you. You feel the threads coming in deeper, and... Sorry, and now I'm now having to roll something. Okay. Uh, you feel the threads just dig into you like nails. They're starting to surge through you. Take four strain. No soak, just take it straight up. And he says, For all you should know, I am everywhere. I have been sending my threads out across this station, across this debris field, and when I am free, I will spread them across the galaxy. I will let them know that when a bond is severed, it does not weaken, it just expands. Oh, I see. So every time we cut your thread, we only create more of the infections. He, he, he looks at you almost like kind of a teacher who looks at a student who just put 2 plus 2 equals 5 on the board. Kind of that <laughs> disappointed amusement. He's like, you know so little about the Force and about the dark side. You know not the strength of bonds how that strength can be fostered even when the bond itself has been cut. You do not know what I have experienced, what I have seen, and your attempts to rationalize it do nothing but amuse me. Hmm. I guess at that point, because Tillin would have kneeled when he meditated, but then he would probably stand if he's even capable. And then he would just say to the figure, show me. You see a vision of Rock holding a lightsaber with a, such an unmaintained blade that it looks like it's on fire. And then you see the man again, but this time in his full stature, well-fed, bright, wearing illustrious robes. And you see a girl, black of hair, bright eyes, holding a lightsaber pike with a red blade. And you see them standing what looks like a royal audience chamber with five judges sitting at the end of the room. This is an interesting sight, the man says as he points to the droid of uh, rock. 
I know this droid, and I know you know this droid. So I believe what I want you to do is to show, give that droid a message. Tell him I'll soon be free, and when my web has been strung, I will catch him in it once again. And this time the result will be very different. And you see him fade away, and the threads fade away as well, but you can still feel them squirming around in you, like small bits that are still trying to find a way to somewhere inside of you. I... But you see for the briefest of moments a ship. You can't see what. It just seems to be silhouetted against the stars leaving the shipyard. But you also hear that echo again. And you will be my vessel. No. Tillin would just like come running, stumbling out. And he'd probably just be like, I think he's escaped. Tillin probably just collapses over because he's almost at his wound th or his strain threshold here. He's going for rock. And that that's just like, yeah, that's all he knows. <laughs> So, you have Tillin's brief report. Maybe, you know, give me that stone or something to bust away these webs or something. <laughs> You're welcome to the stone. Uh, Nardell hands Tillin the stone, and you don't feel the threads moving about you, but you feel like the strain hasn't gone, but you don't feel like they're, the threads are there anymore. I see. Okay, so I would look at him and I'd be like, this creature seems to be everywhere. It is the threads that it has spread around. Almost like a fungus in its spores. And I think it may have just left on a ship and he's going for rock. That's all I can... That's all he told me. Uh, it can affect droids? The way he spoke, it makes it seem like they had met before, and Tillin would describe the man that he saw, like the man, spider, what he is, and be like, do you, any of you even know who this man is? He, has he ever encountered Rock before? I have it. Um, well, I mean... I can't imagine how we're supposed to fix this place other than, like, nuclear fire. But you said you think he's gone? Well, gone in the sense that he's still everywhere in these ships and debris fields and now currently infecting a ship that just left. Actually, Dara, yes. roll me a hard vigilance check. You get uh, one boost. Still in suspension. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to Flip. And here we go. Tillin's mentioning of the word Diomon immediately springs to mind your venture to the Caesarian League, where there was an Imperial, apparently Inquisitor, he appeared to be a Force user, trying to take control of the proceedings. He was stopped and uh, taken into Rebellion custody, mostly by the actions of Rock. And in fact, that is where Rock got the Blade Retribution. It is actually that man's blade. Then, with her, her looking back and thinking for a moment, she actually will say that, and then she'll say, we've got to tell Rock, definitely. Hmm. 
first I think we need to figure out how to, how to cleanse finish. the infection End here. Yeah. Well, if you think that the infection... Yeah, I guess I see, yeah. Um, I mean... I mean the infection here. It does... Does there seem to be any change now that it's left on the ship? Uh, that would be something you would have to go and actively seek out. Got it. Perhaps we should try Just and converge back on the ship and see if we've actually been fighting stormtroopers. Is there any way Tillin could take a breather while he's sitting down explaining all this? The the ache of the threads in your body have has not left you. You do not feel influence, but you feel pain. I see. Um, A but actually, aside from Tillin, everyone else can roll strain recovery. Okay, cool. You do no longer you no longer feel up. you no longer feel the deep chill that seemed to permeate throughout the facility, especially. Oh, wow. the stone. Um, this bridge has communications. It is capable, but the jamming signal. I know we're being jammed, but I'd like for Alro to try to break through the jamming. Like make a signal powerful enough to at least send a very short message through it. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if that's like a doable thing. I let let me put it on the record that I normally would not allow this, but because of special concerns, when Auro approaches the console and begins to work, you actually notice the jamming is gone. In oh. fact, you're also detecting the telemetry satellites again, who appear to be actively relaying messages. So she'll send out a a message warning rock and also contact um Akbar right away. Uh, it does take some time, but yeah. you do actually get a reply back from Akbar, who's telling you uh, that the situation, if the situation at Outpost Dignata is that dire, then the whole station must either, the whole station is considered lost. I suggest you retreat with all due course. Do you want the log station logs? I leave that to your discretion. The best picture we can have of what happened here would give us the best chance of combating this happening again. But if you feel your lives are in danger, I will not press you. Alru will try to. Yeah, she'll take the logs. Like anything that. Uh, you can get the hurricane's logs from here very easily. But to get the logs of the actual outpost, you need to go back to the outpost. Back. Um, well, um, Aro's doing that. Dara will see if she can hook up, if there's any internal cameras for where they fought the stormtroopers. Well, where they fought, they, we fought the stormtroopers. She would like footage of us fighting the stormtroopers if they no. exist. Um, you know, just the records that if they were stormtroopers. You're, it looks like if there were internal security cameras, they've been busted, probably because of a few few rampaging creatures running about. Right, okay. So, you have a choice. Uh, Captain Motocon does speak up that uh, I would rather leave here with what little of my men I can save than try and solve this riddle of things beyond my comprehension. Uh, if we are able to secure the emergency landing bay, we can jettison a compartmentalized shuttle. Ow. Uh, part of the hurricane's structure, so long as it hasn't been compromised. I uh, I hate to leave all these people to just their fate, but I believe I agree. There must be some. Carry on. Oh no, that that's that's all. Aro says that, like they can't just leave 
the other people are rebellion troopers too. Each one of them is, is infected. It? Yeah, and each one of them could spread this plague. What if we crush up them? entire planets? I was going to say, can't you cleanse them with that stone you have? I don't know if it cleanses. It'll take too much. It will probably take too much time, and we got to get the sun flare. I. One of the technicians. I would just. I would probably just look over at Alro, and I'd be like, I don't know if if the stones of influence is permanent once it's dug deeply into a person. I feel like this stone's the only thing keeping uh, me from turning. <laughs> I, one of the technicians, you can tell probably a younger one, he doesn't have as many jowls, stands up and says, the reactor is disabled, but it can be spun back up again. I don't know how many traders are guarding it, but if we can overload the reactor, there's certainly not enough crew left to man the hurricane. How many crew are you talking about? Uh, he points at himself and, and points at the other here. other seven people in the bridge. Well, we can get you out on the sun flare. I, as... We got your back, you got our back. I... As if you're going to scuttle the ship. The guy... Hold up his hands like, as long as our shuttle's here, I, I I don't know if we should risk going to the outpost to get at your ship if we already have an escape means. Means of escape. Oh boy. Well, I'm not leaving that ship here. I, my life would be hell, and, I, and I'd never live it down, and then everyone would be on my back for it. Uh, yeah, being forever known as the one who lost the Sun Flare is not what you want. If you want to risk it, that's fine. Just remember that you're ha you're going to have to go through an outpost filled with people you believe are already uh, entangled in this web. There's no way to sneak um, to our ship. Like, we can't, like... Maybe through the ventilation, but let's face it, Nardal's not getting through there. <laughs> yeah, but if Alro could get to the ship and then bring it around to um, this one. He's a very big silhouette one, and <laughs> I think that's silhouette. still a bit <laughs> too big to get through the vents. Um, does the sun flare that we know of have a beck and call. Yeah, I mean, Pippa can drive the thing. Pippa yeah, has so been we'll, that way before, yeah. Okay, has then we contact them. Yeah, I think so. Uh, all right, uh, using the sh uh, using the Hurricane's comm system to try and hail Pippa and do not get a response. Oh, shit. Is there any chance that the ship that I saw flying away was the Sandfire? I will Some remind flat. you that you saw all other ships connected to this shipyard inactive. Oh, man. Uh-oh. And you will be my vessel. Oh, shit. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right. Uh, ha, uh, I, just to remind everyone, it appears that our let's go vehicle is gone. gone. Yeah, but no, they, they have a shuttle here. True. So we might want to take that shuttle, like right meow. And see if, and see if we can then dock with the sun flare and get it back up and running. No, I think we're saying that the sun flare has been stolen. How can the sun flare be stolen? Dara uh, used the bio lock on it. Lux can the be broken. Uh, you had a whole shipyard of people specialized in getting into ships. Oh, bastards. Well, I didn't get a stolen. 
Mm. And I put it on the record. <laughs> I you can hear that argument. We left. All right. Uh, with that in mind, uh, the captain will lead you to his own uh, shuttle. It's actually one of several in the hurricane, because again, it used to be a pleasure cruiser. So it was specifically, you know, excursion vessels. So, uh, the captain takes you to... Where did I put that slide? I may have misplaced it. Okay, <laughs> Missed I'm... the whole slide? Uh, World 20 is being funny. Okay, so... You end up... Here... Ah, oh, crap, this isn't a big enough page. Sorry, logistics ain't that a funny thing. All right, I'm going to move you back to an older slide. A lot of the pictures are going to be moved around, forgive me. So, uh, he's led you back down into the bowels of the ship. Luckily, uh, it seems like they have whatever it needs to avoid the sea creatures. But as you leave... <laughs> Sorry, I just caught up with the chat there. Uh, so, so as you leave, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, you, you amused me a bit too much, so I got distracted. I, <laughs> uh, as you as you leave the bridge, you go back. Ha you have to go kind of halfway the way you came, and you do pass by what you thought were the stormtrooper corpses. They were Mon Cal corpses. God damn it. Uh, Monicum looks back and, uh, well, actually, the people that were torn apart were the sea creature's fault. Uh, maybe his conditioning was somewhat overridden by the dark side. Uh, Whoops. And he, he looks at you, but he gives you kind of a reassuring nod and says, I've, most of the crew has done this to themselves. I, I will not blame you for this. Self-defense is admirable. But as you start nearing uh, the airlock to the escape shuttle, uh, you do see that there is a line of rebel guards waiting for you. They seem to have also erected a barrier around the exit. We will not let you chase down the Ascendant. And that actually comes from the speakers. It sounds like the commander has uh, been able to connect himself to the PA system. Surrender now and join his glory. I'm going to take a no on that one. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, roll initiative. There was really no way to speed up on this checkpoint. Uh, I'd actually let you choose here because I can let an on-edge state justify this. I'll add a success to mine with that pip. Okay, so where you are on this upper page is basically long range from the exit. It's a detachable corridor meant to go with the shuttle when it leaves. So you're kind of already in the shuttle, just not by the bridge. And then you have the rebel soldiers blocking the way to the cockpit, or really the interior. And it actually looks like there are a couple of mechanics in the back trying to seal it shut. At least that's what it looks like. They got welding torches. All right, whenever you're ready, you can roll your stuff. Okay. Hey. Jeez. That's not fair. You can't roll triumphs. I'm sorry. Yeah, triumphs are just glorified tiebreakers and give them free maneuvers. All right, you managed to steal a first turn with that 7.1. All right, uh, the infantry in the front is going to open fire. Uh, Nardell, biggest target. It oh, is long right. range, so it's going to be kind of hard. So you upgrade it once. Three defense with four upgrades. Ooh, that makes this a bit interesting. Let's 
Let's see, do we have anything else that would boost it? Oh, wait, sorry, you said they're at long? Yeah. Oh, I think Baleful Gaze only goes to medium. Okay, so it's no upgrades, just the defense? Two upgrades. Two upgrades from sense. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. They fail, but they put down a hail of blaster fire. Uh, I'm going to say that's going to... That's going to add a two setback to everyone, anyone who tries to fire at them. Uh, and so those guys, were they the closest to us at long, or are they further back a bit? They're they're kind of all at long, just in a bit of a staggered position. Okay. Uh, but they are going to take their triumph, their free maneuver to take the take cover into the barricades. So it's just going to add a couple uh, setback. All right, two PCs. Okay, um, Dara will go. Yeah, we have a camera. Yeah, I might have asked why I'm saying that Dara's going to have a go. Um, she's going to brace. Well, are there environmental setbacks? Uh, yeah, are there... What? No. Are we in Setbacks. No? All right. Yeah, they're okay. taking cover, but you can't really brace past that. So okay. there is still going to be a uh, setback. Yeah, okay. Um, is there anything, like, above them? Uh, there is. It's like a whole enclosed corridor. So you actually... Yeah, you know what you do? If you flip a destiny, it can be a tubing that has stuff in it that you desire. It can be... <laughs> So whatever's in it yeah. that you want to be in it is in it. Okay, cool. Um, there is actually going to do a cold shot on that above um, one of them, above the one that hasn't gone. Um, and she's going to do guns blazing, so she's going to do take the strain for that as well. And. Defenses? Uh, one defense. And one adversary, defense, so and one. adversary one. Yeah, okay, so that's for two setbacks. Oh, wait, I'm one sorry. Red. You're, I'm sorry. You're aiming at the tubing. It doesn't have adversary one. Sorry. Uh, no, right. no, no, def it's. <sighs> sorry. One defense because it is thick tubing. That's it. <laughs> right, right so, that's def so that's one red then. Okay, yes. No, right. one black. Okay. And one oh, yeah, black. yeah, yeah. It's okay. it's no, there's no upgrade, just one black die. Right, okay. Then with cord shot she actually removes that. You one remove... black die for the aim. No, no, you don't. Okay, there when you do a called shot, there are two setbacks it, added to the check. When you do when you use that column it gets rid of that two setback. Sorry. Sorry, she's using column. This character does not add any setback to combat checks. Right, when you use the aim maneuver. Same. Yeah, which she's going to do. If you're like calling out, like, I want to hit them in the blaster hand or something. Yeah, but she's doing above them. But this isn't... I, I get that you're removing the two setback for using the called shot, but there's one setback for yeah. defense I don't think you're getting around. Right. Right, okay. Sorry. So, just one black die. Yeah. Right, okay. And um, here we go. Alright. Uh it burst. What's in it? Well what about, um, what about what about difficulty? Okay. It's um, actually it's gonna be a hard check because you're shooting down range over them. Right, do you want me to re roll that dice pool? Just roll three purple. I'll okay. let you keep the triumph. All right, you still succeed. You just have uh, three advantage instead of five. Boiling, what do you, what do you reckon? Boiling hot water. Sure, keep the keep the temperature equilibrium. Yep, boiling hot water comes out of the pipe. Uh, I lands right on top of them, and they start screaming as it gets trapped under the plate. And then the steam comes up and just clouds the rest of their vision. I'll and heck, you still have a triumph. What do you want that to be? Oh. God, um, they, the others become distracted 
as as the as the hot water pours down on the guys in the middle, and they all turn and see him, look at him, look at them. Yeah, you know think. what? I'll do one better. They're knocked out of their cover as the water starts to fill up the corridor. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Cool. Um, um, do you have anything else you can do? With those advantages, um, I'm going to use two to reduce my strain. Okay. Um, I'm going to give whoever's next a boost. And I'm not entirely sure on what to do with the final um, advantage. There's, all you can do with one is recover strain or pass a boost. So it's a little bit limited. Mm. And you've already passed um, so I think you might just have to either recover strain or yeah, waste Yeah, I'll recover strain. So that's three strain gone. Actually, four strain gone because I have um, thingy. OK. Okay, who's next? What exactly mechanically are, are they suffering at the moment? Uh, one of them, like one group has actually been damaged by by it, and the other two have been knocked out of cover. And okay. in fact, all set back, attacking them aside from their defense is negated. Got it. Uh, one more PC. Any of the shootier sorts want to go, or sure? Those uh, technicians—they're—they're they're working on a panel. They seem to be working on the door. You can't, from where you are, you can't quite tell what they're doing. Right. Um. But you know, yeah. They're, so they're—they're they're not trying to like set down the system. They're actually working on the door. And I'm they're at—they're at log as well. Yeah. Um, like they've been sloshed around too, kind of. <laughs> or maybe that Alra's <laughs> Alra's gonna, gonna look at uh, Tillit and Art. <laughs> She's gonna say, "Shoot me!" <laughs> if what do you guys want to throw her across and be lies? <laughs> Toss me. I mean, Doc could take a shot at them. You want me to toss? Alra. <laughs> <laughs> I can give that a go as long as you don't resist I can roll the uh, the force die and hopefully I can luck out with two white pips uh, uh, I'm going to try and say no because I'm at the very edge of my strain threshold I will probably pass out if I keep doing this that's fair. Okay. All right. So uh, that PC's turn is spent with Tillin f trying to complete Auro's plan, but he's just so exhausted. Fair enough. Can't concentrate with these wiggling things in his head. You want to do any maneuvers or anything? Um. I mean, it would be the same effect. I mean, I could try and get behind cover at this point. I guess that that's what I can do. Try and get behind cover. Use a maneuver to get behind cover. Because I could try and do another force check as a maneuver, but it still costs strain. I mean, go for some cover. Cover against ranged attacks when you're with Nardell is helpful for a squishy like you. So Yeah, I'm going to go and get in cover. Boy, I need second wind. <laughs> All right. Uh, because Nardell is still the biggest target, and since no one else has approached there, the next group is just going to try shooting him again. Still long? Yep. Two upgrades, right. three defense. Correct. Yeah, nothing else. Okay, I am going to flip. All right, two threat. Uh, as they try and steady themselves to shoot at you, all they do is just get them ready in another position when another big torrent of water comes down, just push them down out of the way. So I'm going to say they're I knocked down. I take that as a free maneuver? Oh, if you want, yeah. 
Jack, can I take that as a free maneuver instead for this threat? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you can. Okay, so I'll take a maneuver to go. So we were at long, so now I'm halfway to medium with that. All right. Uh, speaking, okay, uh, other NPC, now that Narda has charged forth, they're going to try shooting him again. Uh, no, 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 we have a turn in between the two. Oh, you, oh, yep, you do. Never mind. Yeah, so Narda will take that to come from long to medium, and he'll use Terrify. Okay. Uh, I am going, you are going to have two automatic failures on that. Oh. But nothing else. Intriguing. I'll flip to upgrade. You're sensing something you haven't done, but something familiar. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. Okay. Drat. Um. It's that thing again, isn't it? Your I web will... is weaker than mine. Uh, let's see, I use one, manu one maneuver to go to medium and an action. So I have a maneuver left. Let me see if I have any interesting maneuvers for the moment. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll go into cover. Okay. Uh, now the NPC is going to try shooting at you, and I guess now you have four defense. I have four defense, and when I flip, it'll be four upgrades. Oh, but you're now in medium, so that's not three. That's yes. Yep. Now I'm in medium. Okay. Actually, that is still three. Now, did I ever flip that back? No, okay, no, I didn't. So I'll flip that. Oh, geez. Yeah, they. Uh, they're not in. They're not terrified, but they're intimidated, and it doesn't help. They still have a torrent of water just gushing on them even though now it's probably cooled down a bit uh so geez for that three thread i say they're knocked down or do you want to use it for something else um i don't think i can do anything too interesting with it if they were engaged i could um let me just check the ch i don't i feel like we don't often get three threats to look at let me look at the chart um I don't know if there's anything that can go along with it, but one option is active character grants the enemy an advantage in the encounter, such as accidentally blasting controls to a bridge or whatever. So is there anything like that? Uh, so that could... I would say yes, but the biggest problem is the thing that they could shoot that be entirely beneficial to you is behind them. Sure, okay. Um... Okay, Yeah. you know what? They're getting ready to shoot you, water comes down, pushes them aside, and they fire anyway, even though they've been knocked down so they end up shooting the technicians behind them cool and you actually see a couple go down because they're using lethal damage well that's real handy thank you enemies <laughs> the water is so glug, glug, glug. happy halloween people by the way <laughs> be, be grateful i said it was hot, very hot water and not acid <laughs> you're a terrible person jack just so you know. So then, after Nardell comes uh, one more NPC. Uh, there should only be three. Yeah, this is the third. But so one went first, one went fourth, and now we're in the sixth slot. They've all gone. Hmm. Oops. The technicians Two. are somewhat abstracted. They don't have an initiative slot. Okay, I put in three. I don't know. We must have one. There's only three here, and one went after yeah, Nardo, which yeah, that there should be two PCs left. Oh, That's sorry, it. that was their turn. I'm just being dense. I was like back a step. Yeah, we have two PCs to finish out the round. My bad. So, uh, Alro and Doc. So, yeah. have we decided that we're not doing non-lethal damage, or is it just been coincidence so far? Well, three of them have basically been boiled alive. Okay, Granted, that was so, not uh, entirely probably Dara's objective, but that's the result. Uh, so Doc is probably going to try to take out the technicians back here um, to stop whatever it is that they're trying to do. All right. So um, Doc is going to aim and fire. 
Okay. Uh, it is just going to be... I'm going to upgrade once. Other than that, it's just going to be a hard check. Okay. Um, and Doc has telescopic sights on his rifle, so that uh, decreases uh, it from three purples to two. All right. And then with the upgrade, it's one purple, one red. Nice. Yes. Fire away. All right, how much damage? Uh, that's nine damage, pierce three, uh, but also a crit. Uh, that... Oh, oh, hold on. Okay, yep. All but one of them are now dead. Solid move. Okay. Our oh, okay. Yeah, she'll take two maneuvers to get into medium, and then she'll uh, open fire one of these guys with stun pistols, though. Okay. She doesn't want to. Still feels bad. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, no adversary, just have one defense. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I got this confused with the tube. One defense and one adversary. Okay. So that's <clears throat> 13 damage, and with two, she'll crit. Oh, crap. Okay. Well, actually, technically, she has three because she gets one more advantage. Um,. Yeah, so it's 13 pierce 2, and then I guess she'll crit, and then uh, pass boosts along. Okay, you get rid of, you uh, knock out three of them, who are now just bobbing on top of the water that's still filling up the corridor. Alright, and now at the end of the round, the water that Dara has uh, caused to be set loose... Oh geez, we're going to have to use a drawing tool for this. Uh, has now filled up the short range area around the court, around the door. Uh, it looks like the. Jeez, oh, I'm not text. There. Jeez. So up to that point is now underwater. Uh, it's going to be up to the NPCs to determine how they want to deal with that. Speaking of, top of the round. Correct. Uh, the knocked down. Actually, they weren't knocked down. They just got kind of flubbed. They're going to spend their maneuver to move into short with Alro and out of the water. And uh, they're going to actually going to shoot at Nardil, not Alro, since he's still the biggest threat. Cool. Uh, same four defense, four upgrades right now. Okay, they st they're now at short with you. So that's one purple upgraded once. And then two more, and then one. So I got one purple, two red. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, I was counting along as you were doing it. That sounds right. Okay. And four defense or three? Four, because I'm still in cover, unless you'd say. I guess they haven't come far enough to be, be like around my cover yet. Yeah, they were still moving towards Arrow just because that's they're trying to get out of the water, so they're not thinking that strategically right now. Yeah, um, yeah. And they miss. One advantage. I don't know. Maybe the screams of their brethren die down a bit. It's so <laughs> distracting. Cool. All right. We have two turns. Um, I guess Nardell, I mean, I'm here. I'll take the maneuver into short. I will... Uh, I'll attack. We'll come back for the after, aftermath afterward. Um, uh, these guys are one adversary. Yes, and one defense. And one defense. Cool. Um, all right. Nice. So that will be. Four plus one is five, plus four is nine. 
Any peers? None, nope. Okay, you you just trample one of them. Or, I'm sorry, not trample. I guess you're trying to stun... Yeah, so these are like thrown like elbows or something like that, going for the knockout, but not the kill. Yeah, you just kind of give a stunning clap instead of and from one guy's face, and he just falls down. Awesome. Um, Sonic boom. <laughs> I will then use grapple on them, I guess. Um, so now that the first blow has been engaged, she's like trying to wrap them up or something to keep them from getting away. And for my second maneuver. And then the one threat, uh, just take it a strain or something else? Yeah, just take it a strain. It's hard not to kill these people. They're so squishy. All right, uh, one more PC. I think Doc will jump in and try to take out the last technician. All right. Uh, same difficulty you had before. So just one. Uh, uh, I, I. Well, I think you upgraded. You're it last right. Time. I did. So it's actually just going to be two purple with your sight. Okay. Just making sure. No, no, no. You're right. Uh, and Doc, Doc will aim uh, as well. Well, go figure. So that's um, 13, pierce 3, and then the two triumphs. Um, and there was only one left, so I don't think there's a point for that to be crits. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm trying, I know there's something awesome I can do with those. I don't know what it is yet. I'm thinking you shoot at them, causing the door to open, flushing the people away, but at the moment all that does is get them further into the ship. Yeah, you know what? That That's something that can be dealt with in a moment. You flush everyone who's in the waterline away as your, bull, as your bolts hit the door. So everyone out here is out of play. Though the water's now gone too, as it's now just flowing into the shuttle. I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad At the moment, they're out of combat. I, you know, these things were kind of meant to deal with being flooded. It's Mon Calamari engineering, trust them. The, the, tech, the yeah. techs look at you and they smile as apparently they figured something out. It works underwater as well, Daryl would say. Doc would just kind of shrug and say, I meant to do that. Yeah, of course you did. Um, so that'll take one of them out. Is that? Oh, it took two of them out. That's right. Yeah, um, and did the one that shot at you is already gone. So it's actually just all PCs. Right. Correct. Everybody else. Um, I'm not going to shoot him because that will probably have a chance to hit Nardell. And he we, wouldn't be too happy. To go for it. He's tough. How far about um, what medium distance? From you, yes. That'd be two maneuvers, wouldn't it? Actually, I think they're halfway because they moved into short. So they're about they're like three maneuvers away from you. If you take two, okay. you'll be in short with them. Okay, she's just advancing. And she'll, as an incidental, she'll holster her pistols and pull her two swords from um, from the back of her coat. As Blade would do, you, you know how Blade <laughs> would, you know, walk up and draw his sword. Well, she'll do the same, but draw both of hers. Yeah, well, vampires are an apt analogy for this mission. Anyway... Uh, Alro, Tillin, what's up? We still have that one bad guy left? Yeah, and he's already gone, so you can you can all go before he does anything. Um. Crazy idea. 
try and run towards him with the stone out. <laughs> How close do I need to be to him? Uh, you'd have to be engaged. Is Nardell engaged with him? He is. Nardell is, but um, he's also, the guy can't really get away because of grapples. So if you want to kind of hop in on the action, hop in. Yeah, I, I just don't want to uh, use any strain for a second maneuver. Oh, well then just take two maneuvers trading your action for one and then it's free. Oh, is that the case then? Well, then I will do that. Yep. Yeah, you lose your action, but you get two maneuvers for no kind of added cost. Yeah, so I will get engaged with him, I guess, and bring the stone into his presence. Should be enough, right? I didn't think of it earlier. Uh, as you bring the token towards the troopers, uh, you feel it pulse in your hand again, and they just fall down. Limp. Are they still alive? Uh, you come to check their pulses, you do not get a sign of life. Oh, fantastic. That's uh, what could have been in store for me. <laughs> well, guys, I think I found our weapon against these folks. Let's continue on to the shuttle. Yeah, but you got to touch them first before it does anything, and the end result is death. Yes, those the boiling hot water you put on their faces. Well, and the slug in their face. Canonically, she couldn't have known what was in the pipe. She just wanted to shoot it. I, just as being a lazy GM, let her choose. So, I don't think you can blame Dara specifically for those guys. Eh, that's a moral quandary for later. Anyway, yeah, so, the group is out of play, and your way is clear. And as you enter the shuttle and find uh, about, what, six people kind of flopping about as the water continues to fill the chamber, uh, the Mon Calamari immediately make to the bridge and uh, beckon you to come inside. It's like, we're going to flush them. <laughs> Men in black. Uh, well, I'm going to, you know, go where it's safe then. Yeah, as uh, probably wisely all of you enter the cockpit, the door closes behind you, and uh, after the Mon Calamari press a few buttons, you hear a nice... Are you sure it wasn't a lever instead of a button? Uh, it's probably both. I had to press a button to unlock the lever, and then they pulled the lever. Uh, and uh, you you hear kind of this nice dull thud against the door as a green light comes on. And it's like, all right, extraction complete, beginning undocking process. And uh, the crew goes about their functions as you notice what was originally just black blackness before you, because the, there were windows, but they looked out into nothing. You see suddenly the ship begins to slide down, and uh, the debris field appears before you. And you see, it appears that this entire pod part of the hurricane is the detachable shuttle. So, uh, you slide out of the ship and into the calmness of space, the threat behind you, though none, not mitigated. Is the sun fair still there? Uh, if you ask them to pull around, they'll pull up to the docking uh, tube you remember, and it's not. I locked it, so you can't blame me. Uh, That's between you and Joe. As the command crew begins to orient the shuttle, uh, one of them looks at the computers. The telemetry satellites are still online, but they'll be able to track us on the way out. And uh, the captain seems to shrug that off. It's like, they have no ships. They will not be able to pursue us. For now, unfortunately, though your ship is gone, the threat is contained. Right. Uh, and so the I'm going to be in the ship's house. The shuttle, can, uh, the shuttle flies out of the tube, which uh, the captain relays to you, was actually created by the hurricane when it entered uh, the debris field. And once it escapes... Nope, that's not there. 
Uh, now that the shuttle is out of, for the most part, harm's way, Admiral Akbar contact. Now that you're outside the uh, debris field, Admiral Akbar calls you and says, "Agents, we've been able. We've analyzed what you were able to bring, and while this Diamon appears to be a grave threat." And Dogada Outpost is considered lost without a more hefty investment of resources. We are thankful you were able to close this chapter, and we can put our efforts into rebuilding new outposts to better serve the Alliance after the Battle of Hoth. Um, also, can you see if you can put some information feelers out there for the ship we lost? I am already in contact with General Maydeen. And I do, th and I, and Captain Renzi has already reported that her pathfinders are beginning to search high and low for the Sunflower. No, if it stays in the mid rim or the outer rim, it will not be able to hide for us long. Good. I've got a report to write for Captain Joken. I'm in the shit. Put in my recommendation that the odds you faced were quite insurmountable. This Diomon is able to twist our own people against us, and that is a more grave threat than even the Emperor can give face. Thank you, Admiral. I... That's all I can say at the moment is thank you for allowing me to attach your name to this um, report. Uh, the Admiral nods as, he, as the hologram cu cuts out. And with that... Your escape from Devnada Outpost. I call to an end this episode of Shadow the Broker 129 Monsters We Make. So, XP, base 15, plus 1 for. Actually, plus 2 for basically avoiding the sea creature encounter. Okay, hold on. Could Thank have you. made it my bonded creature. Uh, yeah. It's still, it's it's still on um, the hurricane with plenty of stuff to eat. Could <laughs> we get our tokens, our most, our most recent tokens? I don't oh. remember what my conflict was. Yes. Let's see. Where did I leave you? Uh, anyway, 15 plus 2 for avoiding the sea creature yep. encounter. Plus uh, 2. Actually, let's see. 1, 2, 3. Plus three for each member of the command staff you were able to sway without having to take out. Even though you did stun them, they are still alive, just you did have to use violence. Alright. And then plus... I forget. Oh yeah, okay, I'll, and I'll give you another plus one for personally encountering Diomon. That, uh, that would have only happened over very rare circumstances, and the way you did it was quite impressive. So, another plus one. However, I will. That was pretty cool. I think that's twenty-one. Yeah. Odd number, but I will cap it there. Uh, recommendations All for right. most interesting role player. So, David, you went up six. Actually, twelve, because my morality trigger. Yep. So that would put me up. You confronted the darkness that lay in the force and bested it. Yeah, that was pretty awesome, in my opinion. Um, would we not have had any further morality penalties, given that, you know, they weren't Imperials? I'd leave that up to you, because you thought... It's like you did start combat with them, but it's because they were under the pretense they were Imperial. You did find out later that they weren't. So I would leave... If you want to put on more conflict for that, as you think your character should, I'll allow it. I am i don't feel like penalizing you for... I will... I added one more... All right. Um, any duty or obligation changes? No obligation change, but you all will get one duty for, you know, you did do intelligence for the Alliance. And specifically for Nardo, who's camaraderie. You did recover the people who managed to survive this. I, I'll allow that to be plus one. You saved the command staff of the uh, uh, hurricane. Which means so how much did you say we got for camaraderie? Everyone gets one. Nardell gets two duty. Okay. Okay, I'm actually going to put that 
um, into personnel support that and one duty into personnel support. Yeah, you can put it into whatever. You don't have to add it in as camaraderie or whatever. Just add it to whatever makes sense. Yeah. 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 yeah this is this could be there. personnel support, intelligence, counterintelligence, maybe. All right. Uh, so then we were doing Merp. It looks like because yes, and we have nominated. one vote for Tillin. Anyone else? Any? I guess a nomination for Tillin. Any counter nominations? Uh, nope. All right. Chillin by default gets most history role player. Well deserved. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. MVP. Um, Dara for ending the fighting between us and the Montels. Counter nomination. Southern nominations. Three. I think uh, Nardell did very well with getting us past that, that beast thing and all the different things. Like, you got. You, Mind controlled it into even helping us. Like that was it was a pretty big deal. Like it uh, helped us get past an entire encounter. And would just that general combat. Under, would not come under normal XP. Well, that was uh, for skipping the encounter. I'm I'm saying like using it to help us with another encounter, and also just his, his very general combat skills that are also helpful all the time. Yeah, Nardell did get shot at like seven times in that last battle and get hit. None. <laughs> he, he ate a lot of fire that could have been going other people's way. Uh, well, it sounds yeah. like we have counter nominations. So let's just break it down to a democratic vote. If you think Nardell should win, go ahead and type it in chat. If you think Dare should win, type it in chat. And hey, you know what? For once, the mission is ending on time. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, pretty impressive that we managed to cram all that into the short time that we did. Well, frankly, if you had actually fought the sea creature, who knows how long this would have gone. <laughs> did. So our XP was also 21, just to counter, yes. right? Okay. All right, we still need votes from JB. Yeah, sorry, I managed to get out, so I didn't. Oh, well, you already gone. Okay, looks like Nardell wins the majority. Do we get any credits from Admiral Akbar? This was a dangerous mission, and you are out of ship. Uh, let's see here. How much is the base cost of a Citadel class cruiser? He's not going to oh, comp you for it. I just want to know. Yeah, um, I'll look it up for the Citadel. probably something like one hundred and fifty thousand credits. But... It else two hundred base. Okay, he'll oh. give you he'll give oh. you each two thousand. Okay, one percent. <laughs> uh, two thousand total or each? A piece. So each. Cool. All right. And uh, let's see. No change in obligation. I give you the duty, morality we've dealt with. Uh, XP, merp. All right. So I think I will call to an end our Halloween mission. I know uh, the fear factor may have gotten shed when we flushed out a bunch of rebel troopers, but what do you know? <laughs> Later.